Attention, due to the nature of the films discussed, the Civil Gore podcast may contain adult language and themes. Brian, 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 Brian. Tim, to Tim, 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 Tim. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to episode <laughs> 74 of the Civil Gore podcast. I'm back. It's your host, Tim. And this is Brian. I never thought we'd get to 74. It seemed oh like 73 gosh. was a month ago. <laughs> what an adventure. Uh, yeah, we've obviously we missed two weeks worth of episodes due to the stupid hurricane. And uh, but we did get our Orlando trip in. So we, we're going to talk all about that on this show. Give you a full review of Halloween Horror Nights, all the mazes, all the scare zones. I'm really excited about talking about this one. Now, I will say up front, this is going to be a rather raw episode because we were recording so late in the week. I'm not really going to have time to edit it. So if you hear me say, um, a lot, or if me and Brian talk over each other, please forgive us. This is going to be a little rough. Yeah, it's it's and we're we're really excited to talk about it because it was it was such a fun trip. I mean, it's what it's probably one of the best like park theme park kind of trips I've ever done, and it, it was just well, I mean we'll we'll tell you in the detail. Well, it was just a, it was a, so much fun. I mean, there was from the second we started this trip. I mean, <laughs> we had some minor incidents along the way, but it, it but basically it didn't uh, mar any of the trips. Uh, although the heat really tried to, but um, <laughs> yeah, but no rain. I mean, I mean, very little. No, rain. no rain. Maybe yeah, a sprinkle that, here or there. Right, and it was believe me, we were wait, waiting for it at that point. It was it was really hot, and I guess we should say too that there's obviously if you're planning to go to Halloween Horror Nights, there may be a little bit of spoilerific stuff here. Um, so, you know, we'll give you a warning now. I mean, obviously, if you don't plan to go and you just want to hear about it, we'll probably give you just enough. I mean, we're not going to go through scene by scene by any means. First of all, it'd be probably impossible to remember it. There was so much going on in, in each house. But there will obviously be some discussions of our favorite spots of the house, which could be a spoiler. Right. And it's also worth noting that another programming note is that uh, we are not going to do our regular format of a first chop and a dismemberment this week because we have so much to talk about with Halloween Horror Nights, but we will be back on regular format next week with a feature film yes. and, and all of our usual segments. So this will be kind of a mini so type format, but I think it will actually be a full-length episode. Yeah, it'll be a mini mini so co- combined with a uh, Cody episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, so uh, let's get right into it. So, of course, uh, we started off with the Harry Potter theme uh, due to the uh, yeah. Universal trip. <laughs> but let's start off with the hurricane because yeah. this plays big into how this whole trip came together. So originally, Brian and I had planned to go down as couples. He was going with Julie. I was going with Olivia. I was leaving the kids with my mom. And uh, we were going to go on this trip and we were very excited. We were two weeks out. And then we hear about this hurricane approaching. Now, if you guys have <laughs> never been through a hurricane, it is literally the most boring natural disaster on the planet because it just stalks you. Uh, I saw someone on Facebook said this is the equivalent of being stalked by a turtle because you have <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, you have so much warning. I mean, first of all, like two weeks out, you have an idea that it could possibly impact you. So you're kind of getting ready and you're buying water and you're kind of getting flashlights. And then the every day this thing keeps inching closer and closer until like a week out, you're pretty darn sure it's going to hit you because five days out, they're yeah. still pretty accurate. And uh, so we were kind of panicking, thinking, oh, my gosh, what what is this going to do? So the closer it got, it ended up that it's going to hit my hometown basically directly head on as a category four. So I made the decision I'm evacuating the family because I've lived through up to a category three. No way in hell I was going to live through a category four. I've got trees all around my house. And it was scary. We left this house as if we were not going to come back to it because literally we thought that the roof was going to blow off, which it very well could have in a category four. We figured trees were going to be all over it. Um, I was taking literally taking photos, uh, important documents and like my computer and electronics that were easily portable that were expensive to replace and stick him in the car. We took two cars to Charlotte to stay with my dad and it was scary. It's the first time I've ever evacuated my house thinking I may lose everything I own. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, if you 
I mean, I don't know where everyone, all our listeners are, but if you were anywhere, especially even on as far as where I was on the East Coast, I follow a bunch of, uh, thanks to my brother, actually, he's got this whole list of local weather uh, tw- uh, people on Twitter and stuff, and they do a great job, but they even, you know, basically anywhere on this, on the East Coast, you were being told that this was a, a, a landscape-changing possible storm. Right. Like they saying like this could impact the 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 water line. I guess or the, the the those barrier islands could have disappeared. I mean, it was they. It, it, I mean, they were not joking. I mean, they were using catastrophic, yeah. um, unprecedented. I mean, every historic buzzword. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it wasn't a but. I mean, if you watch these maps, the way they think, and like any hurricane, like Tim said, if you lived through one, you've seen these those spaghetti models that could be. Well, it'll come right at you to going completely the other way. And there's always that one that kind of does a spiral. I mean, there's everything. But this one was was different. And I, you know, I, you know, being, you know, seeing this through, you know, 40 plus years of life, this one was was really different the way they were discussing this. So this was, you know, and I was scared because I obviously my, you know, I have uh, Tim's family, uh, Tim's brother, Kevin. I have some other friends that are in, kind of in the area. It was, it was scary. You know, you're worrying about your family and friends in this case. Yeah, it was, it was very terrifying. And of course I had to worry about the kids as well. Now, one of the, one of the worst things about a hurricane we've seen with uh, Matthew and we've seen some older storms is the problem you run into with evacuating is getting back because North Carolina is, has tons of rivers very low-lying areas, uh, so you know it's going to flood. This storm was, in particular, really projected to be bad because not only was it bringing an enormous amount of rain, it was also predicted to stall over land when it hit, which means it could just sit there and flood for you know two or three days. So I knew there was a very strong possibility I was not going to be able to get back home. So now I was gambling with my trip because... If I couldn't get back home, obviously I can't go on the trip. Our flight was going to go out Friday. There was a good chance I was not going to get back into town. And sure enough, that's what happened. So uh, up in Charlotte, we didn't get much of the bad weather. I and mean, we got some rain and some wind, but it wasn't anything near like what it, what we got in Wilmington. And uh, so Monday, I had to make the call of, do I cancel the trip? Do I reschedule the trip? What do I do? I'm mean, going to be out a lot of money. If, if I have to cancel, I obviously did not want to reschedule because the whole point was to go with Brian and Julie. Um, and, you know, we didn't know what that would entail as far as room availability and all that. So Monday morning, I made the decision. I ran up past Brian is what if I take the kids with us? And instead of flying, we just drive down there. We don't come back home. Uh, we just leave straight for Orlando from my dad's place. And, you know, Granted, we got the kids with us. That's going to slow us down a little bit. It's not exactly ideal for Halloween Horror Nights. But, <laughs> uh, so that's the decision we made. We'd rather do that than to just give up on the trip entirely. And I have to say, Brian, I think it, I think it worked out. Like I think we all had such a good time seeing the parks through the kids' eyes. Oh, it was it was, it enhanced it. It I enhanced it, really, it in ways think, you wouldn't expect. Yeah, I think it might have actually been better because I yeah. would have been worried sick about the kids being you know up here in a. I mean. Right now, Brian, even now, there are trees down everywhere. I mean, this is what, two weeks, week or two after the hurricane. I mean, there's 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 houses with tarps on them. I mean, one of my people in my department doesn't have a house right now. Uh, It's still really bad down here. Now, it's not, you know, the stores are back open and stuff and businesses are starting to get open again. But my kids still haven't gone back to school. Their whole cafeteria got caved in. So they're not going to have a cafeteria for most of the year. Uh, so it's still still pretty bad, and they would have been coming back to some really bad conditions that I really didn't want to, to expose them to right away right. anyway. So um, so they got a free yeah. Orlando vacation out of it. <laughs> free, free for for them, free for them not for me. <laughs> but actually, it's it funny the, the 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 thing that turned out to be a, an odd blessing too out of that was that when Tim went to go. I guess he went to have to, you know, obviously because anyone that knows about Universal, so when you book certain hotels, the three big ones, I, I forget, I always forget the big, big one, but then also Hard Rock and uh, Royal Pacific, it includes a Universal Express Unlimited Pass, which we'll get into later, which is probably one of the best perks 
you could get in theme park anywhere, as far as I'm concerned. And what was – so when, well, Tim went to go do that. He had to obviously add uh, the kids to the room, and the guy apparently – I mean, Tim could tell you. The guy was pr- really awesome, it sounded like, on the phone. He told Tim, he says, well, you know what? If you switch to this, you actually basically are getting an extra day which we didn't even need. We only had three days at the park, but it was giving us a fourth and it was cheaper Yeah, because they had a new promotion where it's buy two days, get two free. So, so yeah. that turned out to be plus. So Julie and I called up and we switched this as well. And so we ended up getting a discount. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it actually kind of worked out in our, our favor. Now, granted, I spent yeah. a lot more money adding the kids, right. but you know, we, it, it kind of evened out because you know, we lost a little bit of money on the plane tickets, but not, the full amount, which helped pay for their tickets. So right. uh, yeah, it all kind of, kind of worked out. And man, we had a blast. The kids had so much yeah. fun. We had so much fun. We were worn slam out. I mean, that's the oh most tired God. I have ever been on a theme park trip, but it was, it was totally worth it. Yeah. And we've been to Hollywood nights, which is usually the one that they say is that's the endurance test. I, yeah. I, I have changed my opinion. <laughs> yes. I, people were saying that we had friends that were there the week prior and they were saying, Oh my God, I've never been so exhausted. This is this. This is worse than Hollywood Nights. And I'm like, I said, how could that be? That thing is all day through to almost one in the morning. And, you know, it's right. But let me tell you, and we had it easier than they did because as you we go into details with our RIP tour and with our express passes and everything, we actually, you know, the weights were really small for us. Which, you know, that does tire you out when right. you're waiting you're on a line, especially there. in Florida, out in the heat. Yeah, I mean, that's brutal. So, and let me tell you, I am still exhausted. I wake up, like, still super tired. Julie is still suffering. She she had a, a minor injury on the trip, <laughs> trip <laughs> we'll which we'll get to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that, too. Uh, and she's still, she's got her um, arm in a brace. And, and so there's a, but we're both so just, like, I, I mean, it's amazing how something so, I mean, so so simple sounding could tire you out. I, I think the heat had a lot to do with it, but still, just the excitement and the the you know the the, the fanfare of it all. It, it just mentally tires you out. It physically tires you out. I mean, we were literally up till past one, up at seven. And the funny thing is, Tim and I are on the same excitement schedule. It was like every morning <laughs> yeah. started with us texting each other. What are you guys up? And, and both of us are like, "Yep, we're up." Uh, Julie's just finishing up, or Tim was like, "Yeah, Olivia's finishing up. We're getting the kids up." It was always the same. But Tim and I were like, somehow, like our adrenaline just took over in the morning, and we were both up around the same time. But yeah, <laughs> it was it was brutal. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so before we get to the Orlando trip, as far as the hurricane damage goes, I had a branch on my roof which knocked some stuff loose, which caused a couple leaks in the house, and I had a branch come down on my deck railing and break a segment of my deck railing off but that's it so i was super super lucky uh, we like i said we had people yeah. get flooded out of their house we had people have trees on their roof i didn't have any of that so i was very very fortunate we didn't lose anything um except for some food in the fridge or whatever but uh so yeah so everything's good with the hurricane i spent like all afternoon and when i got off work cleaning yard debris it's going to probably take me another three days to uh, yeah. clean all the yard stuff up. But other than that, I'm just, I'm thrilled that our house is okay. And I didn't have to uh, start from scratch again with all yeah. my, uh, all my goodies and all my horror stuff. So uh, let's go through like a, Brian, let's go through like a recap, an overall recap of how the trip played right. out because we, Oh yeah. And before, and before we do that real quick, I just want to say thanks for the people that were actually checking in. Cause we, I uh, know like Cody and, yes. and Steve Cohn, they were, uh, uh, touching base with us through varied formats to make sure Tim was okay because they knew where he lived. So thank you guys yes, so much. Yes, thank that, you so much. I, I, yeah. I know that meant a lot to, to both of us. So Yeah, it really did. Thank you. Um, so we drove down on – or uh, uh, Brian, you and Julie flew down Friday morning. Right. We actually drove halfway down on Thursday and made the remainder of the trip Friday morning. So when we got there, we had a little bit of time to kill at the pool. Oh, so. that was – which was which was one of the selling points – to the Hard Rock Hotel, by the way, in Orlando. It's got one of the uh, really fantastic pool with the longest water slide out of any of the resorts. Now, obviously not counting Volcano Bay, but um, out of the resorts, they all seem to have a, uh, a water slide. But this was, was one of the longest ones, and, and, and that definitely got some use, out of, especially with uh, Tim's kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and 
I knew this place was nice when I walked in and it smells like cologne. Like the whole place smells like yeah. cologne. Um, it's a, it's a really, it's a neat hotel. I love hard rock stuff anyway. I'm a sucker for yeah, all the music here. memorabilia. And they have kind of like in the hard rock cafe, but not as, not as everywhere. They, they kind of yeah. space it out, make it a little more classy, but they do have like Lady Gaga outfits in the hallways and you know there's a james brown outfit on our hallway which those were kind of cool to see yeah oh yeah no it was the the decor is really cool and it was you know they themed it right down to like the the different like the names of the shops and the restaurants in there and they had uh i think like even the um so even the toilet paper was themed that had a sticker on like saying s- something like uh like next round or something yeah, or, yeah. you know like it, like they really went all out <laughs> to, yeah, it's a really sure, cool yeah. hotel. I would definitely stay there again. It was really nice. Oh yeah, I actually yeah. preferred it to the Disney hotel we stayed in um, last year or year before, where uh, we stayed at the is that Caribbean or one of those. I actually like this yeah, one a lot you. better. Yeah, no, and it and it's also the closest hotel to the parks, which is which that let me tell you when you are exhausted and you need to do the walk back from the park because you don't feel like waiting for the little boat. Getting it being only a seven minute walk makes so much difference. <laughs> yes, it's got a great, great location. So if you ever, if you guys are looking for a place to stay down at Universal, I'd, I'd highly recommend the Hard Rock. It was, it was a lot yeah. of fun. Oh yeah, great, great, great stuff there. And they had, uh, I tell you, but right before you got there, because you guys had stopped for uh, for lunch uh, on your drive, and so with Julie and I, when we got there, we were literally starving. We had like something right before our flight. And we were starving, so we ordered some food and drinks at the pool, and we were just finishing up the food as as you guys got there. And I had one of the best Cuban sandwiches I've had in a while. It was fantastic there. Nice. Yeah. And they bring it, and they bring it poolside, which is great. They have the waitresses come by, and they'll uh, they'll hook us up. So, and she was she was, and like at one point, I remember we were walking by. They came over with a tray of like ice water, and it was like ninety plus that day. And the real feel was close to 100, and so that was, that was great. And the pool was nice. The pool was perfect temperature. Oh, yeah. It was a, it was great. I had so much fun. Like I knew the trip was off to a fantastic start, just hanging yeah. out by the pool for those few hours. Now, we did have yeah. a, we did have an accident. <laughs> yes, there was a minor accident. We decided that it would be – because, you know, why conserve energy for the next three days? So we decided to play a little beach volleyball. And uh, – and so I guess just I didn't see it happen, and I actually didn't see the – I like just – I guess the, the ball was going over, and Julie went to go set it, and somehow I guess she kind of set it wrong, and it kind of jammed her thumb. But she just quietly got up and like shook her hand and walked off yeah. and didn't say a word. <laughs> it was very weird. So I was yeah. like – so I was like, what happened? What happened? And she wouldn't say. So I walked over there, and then she was just kind of shaking her hand and it was – you know, a little bit, and she basically – she was moving it. So we we, we – even though I was a paranoid uh, Jewish wreck, as I always am, I she, you know, the way basically all the signs pointed to that it was more of a jam and a bruise than a break because she was moving it way too much for it to be of a break. But but the next day it looked bad. Remember, yeah. it was all black and blue. It felt so, so, but bad. thank God, the obsessive person that I am, who overpacks everything, always brings this little medical bag with a uh, ace bandage and. So that actually helped her because she was able to uh, wipe that uh, – I mean wrap that around and – I mean she was constantly wiping it off because she also had an ice pack on her. But <laughs> other than that, it was pretty good. Um, so she 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 was a trooper through it. She just – you know, she doesn't let stuff like that really uh, stop her from from having a good time. So it was, it was a minor setback and it probably – you know, maybe it, it, it took some energy out of her. But uh, – and she did get it checked out actually the other day and they, they did – um, they did an X-ray, but they 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 assumed it was the same thing. So she got a compression uh, wrist thing. Oh, now, good. So. Okay. Okay. So she's in. Uh, she's been icing it and stuff like that. So. Yep. So f- she survived it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we were worried about her the whole trip because it was just like, yeah. yeah, it just sucks to have somebody that got injured and you don't want them to be in pain walking around or whatever. Yeah. But um, I'm glad to hear she's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Friday night was our Halloween Horror Nights. Now we decided. We decided to forego early entry, right? Our stay in screen. Right. Which which was we got we, we we thought we were gonna do once we got that extra day thrown in because the reason why we see so originally the way it works is Hollywood Horror Nights is a separate ticket. So you could have a three day pass to the parks, but that does not include Halloween Horror Nights. And what Universal does is they close the park down at five and reopen around seven uh for the event. 
in this Universal Studios, uh, Islands of Adventure, you could be in all the time. But we wanted, we, we decided when we had the three day pass, we were going to do all day Saturday, Sunday, up until we could, uh, until we had our, our second Halloween Horror Nights day, and then Monday. So we'd get all three early entries. But what we realized is with the Express Pass Unlimited, and now that Harry Potter stuff is included, you really don't need the early entry because it really doesn't save you anything. Other than, you know, other than getting there maybe before the crowds, but literally we hardly waited on a thing. You just walk, with that express pass, you kind of just walk through. So, but then when we got that extra day, we're like, well, you know what, technically, even though it's where, I mean, we, we paid less anyway, we might as well just, I mean, instead of just losing it, which we ended up basically doing now, <laughs> we could just go in around 4.50, like even like 10 minutes before it was going to close, and they put you in an area and they call it stay and scream. So that way, as soon as the park starts to open, they release you, and you can usually get a couple of houses um, done before the big crowds start coming in. They think they start letting people in around 6.30 yeah. to get, get in and stuff like that, and, and the houses can get long. Like this event, no matter – even on, on non-busy days, so what they say, this place is swarming like I've, you've never seen before. It's crazy how many people are there, and so – but then at the end we're like, you know what? We're enjoying the pool. We have, you know, we, you know, why do that? And besides, we're still gonna have to figure out. Well, the kids, we, you know, we we didn't think the kids were gonna go through the houses, so we were gonna need to do some sort of a parent swap, which we weren't even sure was available, right? Because yeah. it's not really an event. They recommend it not for thirteen and under. So. But we decided, well, at this point already, you know, like it's like that whole thing that Tim kept throwing the uh, the little the the gif at me where he, where it's Spanky throwing money out the window. We said, what the hell at this point? <laughs> yeah. So we decided to take the the little bit of savings we had on this uh, that we saved and put it towards the Express Pass that night, which does not skip the lines like the regular Universal Express passes. It does save you time though, so it knocks your weights from like let's say the the well we found out on certain houses it depends like the Stranger Things house was close to two hours all night with the express pass we got it in fifteen minutes right so that one worked out really good it was typically um, I would say at least you saved at least a third minimum mm -hmm. like a thirty minute house you'd usually get in around ten minutes yeah and like like yeah. Brian and, said some of the longer houses like you know Poltergeist was getting on up into hundred minutes and we were getting in within fifteen or twenty. Tops. Right, yeah. I think it depends. It, it kind of depended on obviously the the people who were running the, the the gate at the house and how well they were balancing it, and also the location of the house because some of these houses, I mean, if you're not familiar with Universal, these are some of them are in way backstage areas, right? And it sometimes it takes longer to get back out from the house exit than it did to get you there. Yeah. So it it's it's a very Odd thing, but if you've been to a haunt, you've seen they do that. Like especially Bush Gardens, I remember was like that. Remember you'd walk like almost like a mile out yeah. of the park. It seemed yeah. like to come back. So but, yeah, uh, so that was that. We got in there and we were trying to see how gauge how the kids would act. Now my kids are not very skittish. They, you know, they they grow up around me. They they see horror stuff all in my office and stuff. It doesn't really phase them. They love Halloween. They love right. costumes. They love masks. We go in Spirit Halloween. They love looking at the animatronics. So they don't scare easily. And they were excited. Yeah. They couldn't wait to get in so, there. <laughs> and we went through a couple of scare zones. They didn't seem to have much of a problem at all with it. And we'll talk more about that later because the characters were awesome with the kids. But Oh, um, my God. They they blew me away yeah. how good they were with that. But uh, I was sitting there. I was like, I had not been in a house yet. And I was like, you know what? Maybe the kids can handle a house, you know? Like, yeah. why, not? why not? Why not give it a try? And, you know, it's like, worst case, they get too scared and we don't do another one. Best case, they love it, and then we'll just buy them an express pass, throw more money right. out the window, and we'll they'll go in all the houses with us, and it'll be awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. and then yeah. so we look around. I'm looking around. I'm like, what's the least scary house that could possibly be here? <laughs> well, obviously, it's seeds of extinction because that's plants, right. and plants aren't scary. Mm. Well, we found Tactical out error number one. Yes, we found out <laughs> later that seeds is actually one of the scariest houses. <laughs> <laughs> for the entire event so yeah that was that was a bad decision on our father part, of our the part. year me i yeah. take my six-year-old into the scariest house <laughs> of the entire halloween horror nights yeah. and probably scarred him for life and put him through yeah. years of therapy um he yeah he basically 
closed his eyes and like I had to carry him and basically run through the house. <laughs> Yeah. It, well, I, I got to tell you that they were they were such champs. I mean, this yeah. is just the first example oh of how good the kids were on this trip. How they just like rolled with the punches. Like they may have been terrified and traumatized there, but the rest of the night they were fine. Yeah, and you can I mean, imagine like, how tired they were. I mean, we were. Yeah. I was completely wiped out. I can't imagine their little legs how tired they were. Oh my god! Yeah. And, it, well, but they you actually had them getting the stroller on the last yeah. day. It was that that uh, that tiring. But, I mean, I was like jealous at that point. I'm like, <laughs> you know, do they make adult strollers? I mean, uh, you could have bought one of those little. You could have ridden one of those little hover around things. I guess. I you know I felt like I swear to God I I even told Julie Julie was like looking over there and she was tired. I said, do you want me to kick you in the leg and then that way we can get a wheelchair for you? Yeah, the kids were. I was. I could not be more proud of Dad. Yeah. than I was of those kids because they were past exhaustion and that they never yeah. whined. They never complained. They never melted never. down. Yeah. It was just, they were so good. So, yeah. I was just so, so, so very proud of them. So yeah, good, good job kids. Um, but yeah, so we, we figured quickly that that was not going to work. So yeah. we did find out after talking to some employees that some of the houses did have a parent swap and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't why I don't think it was widely publicized because some of the houses didn't know what we were talking about. Yeah. Some had no problem. But at any rate, we ended up getting through what, like three houses, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, we did come on some rides after yeah. after that, that the, we decided to break it up and give them some, you know, we're like, you know what, let's let's try and turn this around quick and we'll take them there. So we went to, to Gringotts, which which the kids loved. I mean, they, that was because that was a. Um, you know, and one of the Harry Potter attractions there and the kids loved it right off the bat. And there was no wait for that either because our express passes actually didn't even ours did theirs didn't, but we didn't even need it. Right. That was the key. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, it was so, uh, <coughs> empty at that point. Yeah. So I think we were at that time, we were so terrified. We had traumatized them to death that we were trying to do anything to distract them from the horrors they had just witnessed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I thought I was going to be like, oh, my God, I've just scarred my kid for life. Um, but, yeah, so it, it worked out. Now, the kids did get so tired later in the evening that Olivia, bless her heart, she volunteered to take them back to the hotel. And, uh, you know, because she's like, they just can't do this anymore. You know, and now right. I'll, I'll see the rest of the houses on the RIP tour. Oh, and we, we should say, and we, we at that point, we had already, uh, Tim had, had saw that um, they actually have a little, like, kids camp at the, on the, on the resort right, property yeah. for all the hotels, which we'll get to another little uh, snag on that one later. But it worked out okay in the end. But And so we knew we were going to get the pretty much the full RIP tour. We, could, we were able to keep that because um, he had got them a um, – uh, uh, the the I guess a re- reservation with the camp on uh, for Sunday night, so that was that was pretty good. So that way, um, so Olivia knew that she was most likely going to get to see everything. Right. So. Yeah. So now, when Olivia left, we were able to like really breeze through some houses. I think we got seven out of the ten done. Yeah, we started. We we got in a roll, and we kind of hit those ones right in the area where it was Poltergeist. Um, All the big IP houses, we, I think we hit. Yeah, we got uh, Halloween. We got all those right. Trick or treat. We got all those around there. So, so that worked out good. So we got you know we got back home late. I mean home hotel late, and uh, Saturday was going to be our just Universal Islands like crazy ride day, and it turned out we did a ton on Saturday. I think that was the real source of all of our exhaustion. Was, yeah, because uh, we we, we really, I don't know why we didn't split it up, but it's that I think. It's that fear when you're there, like, what if we don't get to right, go on it? Yeah. Like, and, and like, especially because Universal. Remember, like, we we, thought we were we panicked when the one of the rides we were most excited for was was the Kong uh, Reign of Kong Skull Island. And at one point, we're sitting there eating, and I look at it, and it's just closed. And I'm like, oh god, what yeah. happened? So why is it closed? What's going on? I'm like, but then by the within ten minutes later, it said that it was open. Then it went back to close, <laughs> then back to open, and I'm like, okay, that's it. You know, it's like so. We I remember we rushed right over to it afterwards. Yeah, um, we were. I mean, and, we were just. Yeah. Plus, me and Brian are theme park nerds. Like our yeah, it's ingrained in us to see everything when you can see it. <laughs> Yes, we've, we've, we've lo- seriously, it's, it's been time. It's, you know, you go to enough parks and you're, you know, park veterans like us, you've some, you will regret it. If sometimes there's certain rides that just, 
have a tendency to break down and you could literally miss them by just not going when it's open. So. Right. So we spent literally the whole day Saturday in between islands and universal. We, we rode just about everything. I think on those. Yeah. Two, I, on I literally day. think, yeah, I literally think the things we skipped were, were the stuff that we did then on Friday night and Fallon and, and Fall and Fallon. And we, and then, and, um, I, th- the horror yeah, so makeup show, I, I think. One right. It was, there was some certain things we left. You know, we knew we were going to have time for, so we left, and we knew we were going to have almost two more days of it. Yeah. So yeah. So we skipped the little things, but it was great. The kids loved it. They got their their wands at uh, at Ollivander's, which was a, a huge, huge hit. <laughs> yes, yes, that was a big hit. Um, now we did not have tickets for Halloween Horror Nights for Saturday night, so the plan was we'd go to City Walk and get dinner. I mean, we didn't get over to City Walk until oh my God, almost yeah. nine o'clock probably eight or yeah. nine o'clock, but we did eat at the cowfish, which was awesome. Yeah. Really, really awesome. City walk's cool. I've it's, I was trying to decide whether I like city walk better or w- worse than Disney Springs. Um, I don't think I saw enough of city walk to really make that call. But- well, yeah. And we didn't get to do some of the things we played. Like I know we said we were going to do a contest between me and Tim and the mini golf. It just, it just turned out it, and, and, and I also said we were going to record a ton of yeah. stuff that, I mean, we, you know what it is? You get so caught up in it. It's hard to do that stuff sometimes. So I apologize. We did get a lot of pictures and obviously we have a lot to tell you, but video and it didn't help that I ended up losing. Also that seeds of extinction, which turned out to be the most influential house in the entire <laughs> trip, because I also dropped my, the little selfie stick I bought yeah. just in, just for this event, because it would help um, because there's so many crowds and, and I am not a, a tall person that I could hold it over and I got a great some great shots on the scare zones because of that. Um, but I lost it. But it's, it's okay because I ended up – it was only seven bucks anyway. I reordered it anyway for the next event we have to do. Um, but yeah, so that that was kind of like – you know, and it just – it was – and I could not carry that backpack on no. day two, which Cody pointed out and made fun of my fanny pack. Yeah. <laughs> but I needed something to carry and it was so hot that that – and that backpack was like – it's like it, it's just the way it was set up. It's like literally right on my back. I would have died if I had to wear that all day. Plus, we had so. the kids with us. It was just it was it was too hard. If we had not had the kids, it might have been a little easier to like break off and and do some fun videos and stuff. But uh, that added dynamic. It was just difficult because you're really constantly. Ha- I was constantly having to pay attention to that. So yeah. uh, that was kind but of. But it was it's it, it's a minor minor loss in the grand scheme, and some of it doesn't. You just don't do it justice anyway. Even if you get videos, I mean, I've watched walkthrough videos, and it does not compare to how cool it is when no, you're in person. No. So Sunday we got up, and we knew this was going to be a slightly more relaxed day, which it was. Right. I think we went back yeah. and hit some of the rides that we uh, wanted to redo. Um, I think we hit some of the stuff we had not done before, um, and then. We came back for, well, I guess, I mean, I don't know if we have to go into the whole detail about the daycare thing. We had, we had a little snafu there where the, the daycare yeah. was actually in a different hotel. So luckily we had moved the, um, we had decided to go down to the RIP tour early. Otherwise we might've been right. late for it. Uh, so anyway, it not, long story short, it worked out. We got the kids settled at the daycare. We headed over for uh, our RIP tour. And we even had time to meet up with my cousin and her yeah, boyfriend was there, which is great. We it ended up working out good. Yeah, and I think we'll have to save. We got to save the RIP tour talk for a detailed talk. This is just an overview. Yes, yes. Oh, and also we need to get. We also found out my cousin actually had done the scare actor dining experience. So we'll have to have her on in a future episode so she could tell us about that because yeah. that was one of the things I was kind of interested in doing also. But I'm like, we're doing the RIP tour. You know, I'm sure we'll be back to this event at some point down the road, and maybe that's what we'll do next time. Although that RIP tour, when we get into details, I, I'd be hard pressed not to do that one again. Yeah. But <laughs> so the RIP tour was awesome, and then Monday morning we got up and went. Kind of by this point, we were all pretty wrecked, but we yeah. went over and just kind of did some of the last minute things, kind of mopped up whatever rides the kids wanted to ride again. We got a proper ride on Hulk this time. Yeah. I mean, not on the Hulk on uh, on King Kong this time. Yeah, I got a, and I got a we, front we found row that ride we got on a Hulk. shortened. Yeah, yeah. Tim got his front row. Yeah, for some reason uh, the Hulk ride has a has two again the Hulk. Uh, the Kong ride has two versions. I always heard one was a rain version, but it was not raining the day we did it. No. And it shortened the ride. So the so and I went on it when I was waiting for Tim. They were coming a little bit later than us. So Julie and I had went early. Um, 
and we uh so i got uh so i went on it again i'm like we we're waiting for them a little bit let's go on again because uh, uh julia also told me the left side is better for some of the effects and it went outside like it was supposed to that tim and i were actually discussing the day before like wasn't this supposed to go outside <laughs> first yeah and and then we were just convinced that we had it wrong but then i said no tim you got we got to go on it again we got to go on again so the kids went i guess over to um with a uh, flight of the hippogriff which was referred to by julie and olivia as two different things yeah. julie julie's was uh what did she call griff griffin Gr- uh, the flight. griffin coaster yeah the, the griffin coaster and what did olivia, olivia called it flight? flight of the griffin door <laughs> right yeah so they definitely got they were in there with harry potter terms just not <laughs> they were close, said they were close. yeah g- give them credit for yeah and, and it's important to say i got my 100th coaster ride yes which would not have happened if the kids did not come also. that's right but... so that shows on that's another bonus that, because for all you not know, there is a ride there, and okay. First of all, we've we've might have touched on this before. Coaster nerds like us are all about the credits, and there are some credits that are what they consider rare credits. This was probably one of the rarer credits because it's uh, Pteranodon Flyers, and unlike other rides where there's a height limit, this one has a height restriction. So adults, if you're over fifty one inches, you have to ride with a child. Uh, so it's like – so thank God Tim's kids were there. So Tim and I went on, got our credit the first day, and then on Monday, Julie and Olivia got their credits. Yeah, and they strictly the – I mean I've never seen a yeah. ride enforce this. I mean they had two big guys at the front yeah. enforcing this. Like they were just dead serious so that you were not getting on this ride without a kid. <laughs> so Yeah, and I saw people walk away like all angry. Yeah, like. it was – I mean that, they were dead serious about it. Yeah. So that was fun. And, and I and what's ironic is I absolutely had to have that credit because the Woody Woodpecker coaster was closed. Right. That could which, have been my which, 100th. Right. So Tim was definitely going for kitty credit. Yeah, I'm going kitty credits for my regardless. milestones. But, anyway, but um, so let's – uh. Yeah, so that was Monday and then we kind of – you know, obviously uh, Brian and Julie had to catch their flight and we ended up having to – make a long drive back to uh charlotte but uh yeah monday was was a lot of fun because it's kind of more of a relaxing day yeah uh but let's talk we, ab- we did get our voodoo donuts in oh the, yeah in the yeah we did span that's right that. yeah i so I, I posted a picture of that and I'll, I'll i have some pictures that i didn't get to post yet i took from uh a lot of clips from the the academy of villains i have some scare zone videos i snapped up uh, stills out of that that I have to post. So we're going to post those. Uh, I'll probably post those over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be good. So, so let's talk about a little bit, some of our favorite uh, universal rides and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Because I had not been to the park since 2002. Obviously it looks completely different. It was, to me, it was essentially a new park because yeah. uh, I had not seen most of the attractions there uh, other than maybe ET was the only surviving attraction I had ever, I had ridden before. Um, and I guess I'll give my impressions, Brian, since it was my kind of first time. Yeah, there. yeah. Uh, I loved Universal Studios this time around. Um, I used to like it, but there was not, it wasn't a very big park. You had Kong, the the old Kong. You had Jaws. You had ET. You had the horror makeup show. Uh, Back to the Future. Um, but there wasn't that much to do in that park, and to me, this one felt like it, there was much more to do. You had Despicable Me, Simpsons, Mummy is oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Rip Ride Rocket. Rip Ride now Rocket there. now, which was cool. Um, then, of course, obviously the Harry Potter stuff. Diagon Alley was awesome. Um, that blew me away. The The Frozen Butterbeer absolutely lived up to my expectations. I would actually say mm. it surpassed them because I expected it to be sweeter. And, like, I thought it would be too sweet that I could not even enjoy it. And it was actually, like, spot on. Um, oh, yeah, they do a great, great job of... of uh... Of, of tempering the sweetness yeah. for what you'd expect. Um, yeah. So I absolutely loved Universal Orlando. I loved Islands as well. But part of me, I think, part of me liked Universal Studios a tiny bit better. And I'm, I was trying to figure out why. And I don't know. I may, I think it maybe is, is partly nostalgia. Um, because you have like the old E.T. right there. You have the horror makeup show there. I think I felt a little more at home there. Uh, because I had been to that park way back in the day. Um, but islands obviously has some of the better rides, especially the water rides. <laughs> yeah. The water rides at islands were just phenomenal. Uh, Popeye bill drat barges or whatever. We got completely soaked on that. Yeah. By the way, that ride, uh, actually all the water rides there seem to have a vengeance on Tim. It's like you survived the hurricane <laughs> where well, we're going to yeah, soak, soak you now. Soak you anyway, we hate Tim. 
Yeah, um, they were – especially Bill Drebbarger, there was like literally this wave that somehow <laughs> targeted Tim and Olivia and hit them with yeah. such force. Oh I was like, oh my god. Um, Dudley Do-Right great. Falls is just a fantastic oh, flume, yeah. flume ride. Um, it's right up there with Splash Mountain for me in terms of fun. Um, Kong is obviously – really cool I, you know a lot of people kind of dissed on kong because it is another motion simulator and, and you know, everybody rags on universal for having motion simulator rides but they're really well done i mean they're they're lots of fun yeah well that grew on me the second time i went on it and it did outside and i sat on the left side and i got that cool like falling yeah I, it actually it grew on me to the point of what it turned out to be what I thought was going to be one of my more disappointing attractions to one of my favorites of the trip yeah it were really, it was really really good um Way better than Fast and the Furious. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, well, also, I mean, I uh, was, I'm really not a Fast and Furious fan. I mean, really, I, I I don't even think I've seen a full ver- movie. I mean, I know what it's about, and I've seen clips, but it's just it's different. Like Kong is so immersive, whereas Fast and the Furious is literally just one long simulator scene. Where Kong really builds your builds the atmosphere up a lot better. I mean, they're building you up that you're from the queue line with stuff. And you're going through the, uh, you know, the whole thing, especially when you go the outside portion and they chant Kong as you enter the temple. Yeah. I mean, something like that. That's build. The other one was, hey, we're going to a party. Uh oh, here's an FBI agent. <laughs> and now the, run. The graphics were really bad on it. Yeah, compared it compared to Kong. The, um, yeah, with Kong, which was like some of the best 3D stuff you'll have. I mean, literally, he leaps over your tram onto the because it was one of those Omni Dome screens, and so he's literally leaping over you, and then he's appearing on the other side seamlessly. Yeah, and that was cool. It just and he shakes your tram, and he just everything goes in, and the animatronic at the end was fantastic. I mean, it's just overall like. I mean, it's leaps and bounds. And Fast and Furious came out after. Yeah, but I think Fast and Furious was kind of a, a rush job in, yeah, in my opinion like, yeah. the queue is the and best I, part I, of fast and furious actually. it is yeah the queue, you get to see all the kind of cool cars and cool like garage sets and everything but and it, it also kind of i'm i'm, I'm like angry with it because it kind of re- it replaced one of my favorite attractions which was uh disaster yeah or it which used to be earthquake and you know it had that cool christopher walken thing and, and it's funny they, like i told him i said you know rock was the rock was in the uh the uh, disaster attraction. Now he moved to Fast and the Furious. So he basically, it's just, that is going to be now forever known as like, whatever they keep replacing with it has to be Rock. Yeah, the Rock. Rocks it. It's got to be in that building. Was, was going back to the horror stuff, you know, uh, the mummy, which is, a, which is a coaster um, and dark ride in one was phenomenal. I love that ride. And actually I got yeah. my daughter on it, which I was very proud yes. of. She, she How loved, great was that? Yeah. That, that she, at first she didn't want to go on it. She was a little nervous. But um, I think really what did it is like she went – We I was actually nervous when she went on uh, – when we took her on uh, Harry Potter uh, on the Forbidden Journey because that's a – that's like this – if you haven't been on it, it's it's what they – it's a KUKA robot arm is what they call it. It's like – remember those Armatrons from Radio Shack years ago? It looks like that where it's like if some crazy person was controlling um, – your car at the end of some like robotic arm yeah and and so and it flips and flips and it has the technology which literally we could talk for hours on this episode which we're not going to but there's a lot of sets there's a lot of noises it's a lot of swooping it could be f- scary for kids it's a very uh, intense Tim's- ride really for, yeah. for what it is it is for for a, a Harry Potter attraction. It's intent, and I don't think we could. We barely kept. We couldn't keep Anna off of it. No, she, we we had to. We had the luxury of doing the parent swap for that because Joshua was just a little bit smaller. But so it was great. So when Tim and Olivia and Anna went on it, they came back. We watched Joshua. When it was our turn, we we said, "Anna, you want to go on again?" She's like, "Yep." Yep. She <laughs> would double dip the line. So that yeah. Was so awesome, she got man. like she got like twenty rides on that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I I would say if you had if you pressed me on what is the best ride at universal and islands to get i think forbidden journey has to be the best ride overall yeah i yeah i agree just from the entire from the and you didn't even and funny because of the express pass we didn't really get to see the the queue as much as i would have liked you to have gotten to see it because i know you pass by but you know they have that whole like that what's that immersion effect where it looks like the it's like a projection of but it looks so three dimensional. There's that whole part where Dumbledore talks to you for a while when you and yeah. I've been stuck on that line for the enti- entirety before. And there's that whole sequence where 
you actually, it explains the point of the ride, which kind of stinks that you have to go past it. But what it is, 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 is you're in the, watching a, a boring dark arts thing or something. And Ron and Hermione come and, uh, and Harry come out from under the cloak and they tell you how they're going to take you to a Quidditch match. So that's how that's whole, that's the setup of the ride. And they're, they're there and they pop out and they're, they're talking to you and everything. And, and so it's a whole big thing. So, but I mean, that's basically the bit. And they actually, at one point, they make it snow in the room. So there's a whole bunch of cool stuff that they do there. But, and even just without that, then the ride is spectacular because, you know, it basically, the whole thing is it's, we joke with Coaster Radio that literally it is bench the ride. But, um, it's, yeah. So basically, you're on a bench and Hermione throws, I guess, blows that flu powder on you. Yeah. And that's what makes your ride go. And even then, like, Tim, like, didn't even notice. I guess you said you didn't notice until our last ride about the, the uh, room of requirement effect with all the floating candles at the top. Yeah, it's just every all the little touches are just amazing in, in that whole world. Uh, I was very impressed. I mean, I had read plenty about you know the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, as it's actually called, not the, not Harry Potter yeah. World, which I like to yeah, call. Yeah, not Harry Potter, but, uh, or Harry but Potter yeah, Land. It's, it's amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah. aside from a couple of very minor spots, there's nowhere you can look and not see theming like there's nowhere right. where that breaks the illusion that you're actually in diagon alley or in hogwarts or i mean very very few occasions where you can actually kind of break that illusion it's really really well done and I, yeah including the train yeah ride. yeah the in- train's phenomenal i mean i'm not a i'm not going to say i'm a huge harry potter fan i've read all the books i've seen all the movies but i couldn't tell you all like the minor characters and stuff but uh, we need Amanda on for yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I can imagine if you were like a hardcore Harry Potter nerd. Oh my gosh! Like I don't think yeah. you'd ever want to leave. Those no. Two lanes. Yeah. But let's talk it, about uh, Brian. You mentioned the Express Pass because I think it's worth throwing in here right before oh, we get yeah, to the, yeah, scare, yeah. the haunt talk. Express Pass yeah. is phenomenal. You know, obviously, if you've been to Disney, you know they do the the. Um. Oh my gosh! Just like fast, fast pass. pass. <laughs> so you know, yeah. you're reserving times on a ride and all this thing. Universal, this is like your traditional fast lane or something you would see at a regional park. It's just a simple. But better. Yeah, but even better because you're just going in an express queue that's different from the standard queue. You go up, show the guy your express card um, or ticket or whatever. He'll let you through. Then there's usually a second checkpoint where they actually have to scan it and verify that it's you. But, man, I can't tell you how much value we got out of those express passes because we hardly waited for anything. It's worth every penny. Even the the monster show, we got to go early in. It's in the front row. Front row, yeah. yeah. Front row, dead center. And the thing is, it's not like the fast passes where you're having to come back at a certain time and this and that. It's just every ride you just walk right through. It's so and over and over again if you want. Yeah, you could get right back on the line. You don't and like you know like fast passes, which you have to book it again, or at uh, at at the Six Flags parks where you have to. Um, type it into a little machine. I mean, I guess Cedar Fair is closer where you can kind of keep going on it. Right, yeah. Cedar Fair, I guess, is, is the closest one. But even then, it's like, you know, sometimes they, they break you into a line. And But this all, this also, like, works for the restaurants. You get priority seating at restaurants, shows. Um, I mean, you even get uh, – was there an entrance? There's certain entrances to things yeah. you can get through that way. It's just – it really – it is the best value. And – you know, so you you end up paying for it in the hotel. It's a little bit more expensive, but if you think about what you get out of it and the value, see now people that go to parks as much as Tim and I, and you know, you know, and even Olivia, who just you know, who who said the exact same thing that we that we always say is like, you know, do you want to? You're spending a lot of money to go to any park. And sometimes you spend that money and you don't want to spend the extra on an express pass, but then you end up waiting in line and not getting to everything. So where's the value of that initial expense? Sometimes it's better to just pay a little more, but know you're going to get the experience that you want. Right. Yeah. Your time and is this money. does it. Yeah, it is. And, you know, especially with, you know, you know, you got, you know, the kids were there. They're not going to want, and it was 90 plus degrees every day. You And some of the queues are outside. You really just don't want to bother with it at all. It was worth every penny. I, in fact, I've never been to Universal without some sort of an express pass. Like I got a another pass one time uh, when Julie and I went because she wasn't feeling good. So I asked what 
they could do for us. And they gave us kind of like a modified express where we really didn't have to wait on the line where it worked kind of like that. They would write a time. But if it was a half hour or less, they'd let us just go on the regular express line. So it's like I don't think I've ever really waited on lines at Universal other than the Harry Potter attractions yeah. before they put that on. And now with that on the pass, oh, my God. It's like especially the, the w- going back from Hogsmeade to um, to Diagon Alley. The queue for that train is almost out, all the way outside. So you imagine standing in that line, no, no. waiting to go in like a hundred degree heat at that point. No. Yeah, I would, I will never go back to Universal and not get Express Pass. Period. Yeah. I mean, it's you plus, and it's the best thing is it's included in those three hotels, yeah. and you know, so it's like you're paying for it, but you don't almost see it. It's like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally, totally worth it. So, are we ready to get to Halloween Horror Nights? Uh, maybe we should save that for the next episode. <laughs> we we talk talking, so much now. We're going to be mean, Civil War yeah. the theme park episode now. We're just going to talk about Universal. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. of course we're going to talk about You guys have been waiting patiently nights. enough while we babble yes. on about our theme park nerd stuff. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk. We have a we have a kind of a rundown here of the order in which we're going to talk about things. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the scare zones, give our overall thoughts, give our rankings and our favorite moments. And right. we're kind of going to keep that format for also for the houses. And I think what Brian and I decided to do is we found it difficult. And you'll know why when we start talking about these to do like yeah. a top 10, not top 10. Well, there's only 10 mazes, but a 10 yeah. spot ranking because these houses were so good. It was going to be extremely yeah. hard because you were going to get houses that are like at slot seven that don't really deserve a seven. Right. They were because so good. It- yeah, and and like, and it's funny that one of the best comments I've heard was was from our good friend the Beard Man, where he said, "Even the worst house at Universal is the best house you'll find out of any other park." Right. Yeah. <laughs> so what we decided to do is we're going to give our our rankings one through five of the non IP houses, or, or otherwise known as the original houses, and our one through five ranking of the IP houses, and I think that's more fair. Right. Yeah, because it's, and it's kind of hard anyway to 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 compare to me to compare a, an original house to an IP house because they're trying right, to accomplish two different things. Right. And, and also the IP house, you may have a, a soft spot for the IP, which automatically is going to boost the house up higher. Right. Yeah. And you know, and you know what they're, you really know what they're trying to get now. Whereas the non IP houses, sometimes you may miss something because they're trying, they're trying stuff and there's so much going on and you don't know what to, to, to kind of have a reference point for. So all right, so it's difficult. All right, so we're, let's go through the scare zones, and these are in no right. particular order here. Uh, we're just going to yeah. give our thought, our general thoughts before we give our rankings. Um, so first up is Revenge of Chucky. I was very excited for this one. Yeah. So what do you and think? I think of this, this one? may have been the well. I think this may have been the first one we ended up going through. Right. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I, you know, the, yeah, this was the one I was excited for the most. I think. Um, and it was it, it definitely lived up to it. So it, what it was is that they, it wasn't just. Chucky like there wasn't a lot of like hundreds of Chucky's running around it was uh, basically Chucky was the centerpiece but it was also if all the toys you know of as a kid were were come alive like there was the barrel of monkeys and the monkeys were jumping around outside with a big barrel on the stage and there were crazy doctors walking around as, as they had a full-blown version of operation um and there was um oh there was a weird Pee Wee Herman guy I don't know what he <laughs> yeah. was doing. but I know but then I realized he wasn't Pee Wee Herman that's right he was like a, one of those like Charlie McCarthy type doll I think right. that's what he was supposed yeah I think to he be. was yeah, a ventriloquist dummy uh, there was yeah. uh good guys employees that were in these weird right. um I don't know why they were in these like yellow raincoats yeah I didn't know that I didn't one, really understand that, that. they looked like the little Georgie from it but they were in, like these raincoats with blood all over them I don't know what that was supposed to entail but they were supposed to be good guys employees anyway. Yeah, and I think there was like a, gr- a green soldier. There was a, a Barbie doll that went awry or like a gem. She kind of looked like gem and the holograms or something. Like it was like basically there was some just random generic toys that they did. And then there was just some weird characters walking around that you may not know. But you didn't need to because it was – and, and I got to say though, it's like they didn't – like – and this is not a knock on the other kind of scare zones in other parks – but, you know, most of them use the same old tricks where it's them sliding on their knees or they just rattle something at you. I mean, there was a little of that there, but a lot of them were like more playful and would kind of like sneak up on you and or just kind of stop and turn and stare at you and like why like almost turn their head as you're walking by. Like you don't know if they're going to – they're just very – the scare actor – I mean you'll probably hear us say this over and over again. But, like, the scare actors were just, like, 
were so top notch. It was incredible. They were just all so good. And I mean, Tim will tell you how, like, I mean, how they reacted with the kids too, which I thought would just blew me away. Right. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't avoid the kids. I mean, in fact, they actually no. sought them out. I think, but uh, they were very nice to the kids. Like they understood these kids were underage for this event. You know, I didn't have a choice. Right. You know, if if I had had my choice, they wouldn't have been there. But the fact that they were there, you know, they would kind of, kind of do a little bit of a scare, and then they would immediately like come up for like a high five or yeah. or kind of give some friendly gesture like hey I was scaring you but I'm not really a bad person I'm not really a Yeah scary they like person. pose they pose with pictures like the monkeys would like f- jumping at them but then they posed a picture with them It was very cool like they did it without um completely breaking their character or anything but just the, they kind of even like the chainsaw people you know they would you rev their chainsaws or whatever and kind of, but they would keep their distance and then they would come up to the kids and like give them a high five or something like to say, you know, it's okay. I'm, yeah. And they weren't trying to scare the kids to death, but at the same time, they weren't trying to shy away from them either. They right. They were interacting they, with them, which I think was cool. Yeah. That, and like, I, you know, I mean, I don't know if anyone from Universal listens to this, but like, you know, bravo to you, you know, I, whatever you guys do to train your scare actors, they're, they're just so professional and so well done like and we actually uh i guess we I, even though this didn't happen till sunday i guess we could kind of say it now that we we did happen to know one of the scare actors right, yeah, i guess uh, uh, a friend i know through the coaster community danielle she messaged me and she found out i was at universal and basically said come play with chucky so yeah. i found out she was working the uh, chucky scare zone and we just happened to be walking through there during our RIP tour, and I was looking for her. I didn't know what she was dressed as, and she just comes up screaming in my face. And uh, so I was like, Danielle, it's so good to see you. And she never broke character. Like, she never stopped. No, and went, hey, how are you doing? None of that. Like, she did, she no, would like, not break character. She did kind of say, hey, are you guys having fun kind of on the side? But, like, in character. But in character, that was, was yes. Great. Yeah. And, uh, Total pro. And, Total and pro. stopped for a picture and everything, but she never once broke character. It was, yeah. it was awesome. Like, so we... You, Gave her a shout out props on Facebook for being so uh, professional. Uh, yeah. Really took her job seriously. So that was really cool. Yeah. And they had – um, it was a, one of the cool effects they had at the Chucky thing was in that thing what I mentioned earlier about the game of operation where they literally had a guy propped up. I mean you could tell what they had. You know, they had a prosthesis, yeah. I guess, a prosthetic – body and his head was popped out but it was so funny and they had the doctor going all right we're gonna take out whatever and he pulls it out and the water squirts out of the center to make it look like blood and everyone goes ah yeah. so <laughs> it, was, it was fun it was fun and the chucky puppet was good too i mean there was there was some people that were a little bit inebriated that was interacting with him which kind of probably stifled his game a bit right yeah the chucky say. puppet you know he can see the crowd and he's being operated by a, a person in the back so it really a lot of his humor depends on who he gets to interact with and i think when we stopped the one time we stopped when he was out we just had kind of a bad run of people that he was yeah they were kind of they were kind of like just kind of you know being more obnoxious than anything so yeah and it was late too it was late and there's alcohol flows all over this park (laughs) so I think so, if we had stuck around for a little more Chucky, I think we might have enjoyed his act a little more. But uh, oh yeah, because it wasn't not a knock and he sounded exactly like Brad. Dura, oh yeah, he too, did a that, great job. In the, fact, he sounded more like him than some of the videos I've seen of other Chucky. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, he did. He sounded like that. Like it almost um, you could almost think that it was Brad Dourif hiding in yeah. there. And we'll get to more of some of that the re- realistic uh, stuff later too. And I, oh, and then we should mention, I guess that night we did uh, get to try the world famous for Halloween Horror Nights pizza fries. Yeah, they were, were good. Amazing. Yeah, in fact, they inspired Olivia enough. She's going to make our own pizza fries one night for our nice, dinner. So. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So for what we, I mean, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's literally a, a bunch of French fries, and they put uh, some uh, like. Uh, you know, pepperoni, cheese, sauce, maybe some I think some peppers some on there. Sausage, or something. I think, and, or something in there. Yeah, there yeah. might have been some sausage in there, and it was just really good snack. And at that point, we were really hungry, so it was a nice uh, little spot. Of course, we had like the most darkened table in the world in the back. <laughs> yeah, like, we were literally because it was crowded. Um, but the we, next scare zone up was the harvest. Now, I, I won't get into my rankings yet, Brian. But the harvest yeah. was kind of a. It was kind of tucked off to the side. It was. Um, more promotional. It was. Almost. It was really. Yeah. It was weird. It was. I didn't even know it was the scare zone. Literally, I didn't until either. After we had come back, and we're like compiling our list. But it was basically you had like these kind of haystack type standees where it would have like different mazes. Like it would have like the poltergeist 
an advertisement for the Poltergeist maze, and it would be like a TV set, and maybe yeah. the clown. And they were really cool photo ops. Oh, I yeah. really liked them for photo ops, but I never saw many scare actors walking around in there, which is why I didn't know it was a scare zone. I yeah, thought it there was were just, some. Yeah, there, was there some. were some, I think, but it was generic. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I thought it was like ro- just walking through a promotional alley of they were talking yeah. about all their houses and stuff. Because I figured you know, during the day, people would walk past this and go, oh, this is a cool thing. They have Halloween Horror Nights here. Maybe I'll buy yeah. a ticket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for like, people don't do their research. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't. This scare zone was like... I. Like I said, I didn't even know it was a scare zone. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad for a scare zone. Well, yeah, no, and we were taught, remember, after I'm like, Tim, I'm like, did which one was the hardest? Yeah, yeah, like, I don't remember. <laughs> and we, we actually thought it was the other one, because the other one sounds, <coughs> which we'll get to later at the end, sounds like that could have been that one. Yeah. Uh, the harvest could have been the other one, and that one could have been Twister Tradition, but we'll, we'll, but yeah, so we were a little off on that yeah. one. But it would, not to say it was bad. Like I said, nothing there, even the worst thing there is still leaps and bounds yeah, above they a have lot the budget. of other things. They just so, have a yeah. great budget. Uh, Killer yeah. Clowns from Outer Space was another scare zone I was very much looking forward to. Yeah. This one did not disappoint. They would have a big projection of the tent coming down every now and again. Yeah, like cool. so it was like the, the ship was landing. Yeah. It was really, but, uh, really the, cool. The scare actor costumes in this were incredible like these killer yeah. clown masks and you saw it on our instagram picture were just yeah. phenomenal they looked like they stepped right out of the movie they did it was it was probably the best scare actor costumes i've seen anywhere yes i would i, I would mean go well actually all of universals really were but the, but that one was like i mean because it was so much like the movie it was movie quality like they meant the these were not just cheap masks these were meant to last and probably could be used in a sequel if they wanted that's how good they yeah, were yeah and they would they were really good these these scare actors were really good about interacting with you they would stop and oh, pose yeah. for pictures uh they would play funny tricks like with our rip tour guide he was like making fun of her one of the clowns was making fun of her so I, oh yeah with the, the leg or something yeah. holding a turkey leg up or something so I re- yeah i really i really liked how interactive and how themed this this scare zone was because they did such a good job with the scare actors yeah it was really fun and it had the music but the, the, the funny music yeah. playing in the bed the, and the killer clown song it was great it was really cool uh vamp 85 was another one that was just so cool so this one the concept behind it was that vampires are having a new year's eve ball on uh, in 1984 and the ball's about to drop and it's about to turn 1985 and so you have these vampires walking around with like, there's a Michael Jackson vampire. There's a Prince yeah. vampire. There was a stage where all of the musicians, like these hair metal band had gotten killed and like microphone stands stuck through their guts and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. We actually got to see one of the cool elements. They said, there's a couple of the signature things. Like we didn't get to see the ball drop, but we saw them do thriller, which supposedly is a, one of the highlights that they do. Yeah. It was, it so was got a really cool zone. Cause I love, obviously I love the eighties. Uh, yeah. The idea of vampires walking around and the scare actors were really good was we'll get to when we get to the RIP tour because one of those scare yeah. actors from Vamp 85 came over to our table. I've also got a picture yeah. of her on Instagram and she was just phenomenal. Like they were yeah, so, yeah. so cool. Um, really into the, the role. Yeah. Which was great. Yeah. And then the final one was Twisted Tradition. Now, this was looked very similar to if you've gone on YouTube and seen the old trick or treat scare zone they had last right. year. This was very similar to that. You had these jack-o'-lanterns up in the trees. This was a much more traditional Halloween type scare zone. You had hay bales. You had some really, I think some of the coolest original scare actors were in this zone. Oh yeah. Like those pumpkin like head guys with like the rotting pumpkins coming out of their face. Yeah. And you had these like, I mean, uh, stilt walker guys that were these big yeah. jack-o'-lantern guys and they glowed in the dark. Like they're, they're, uh, their whole mask lit up. It's one of the coolest costumes I've ever seen. Probably. Yeah, and, and yeah, and it, what was great about this is walking through the day, uh, you know, when it's light through there because it's like they cannot put these props away, and plus the hollow the the event starts when it's still daylight. Um, you walking through it during the day is impressive because you could see sometimes a little more detail on the set pieces, like there was that one where the the girl was like coming out of the rotting pumpkin and stuff like that. But then at night when it gets dark and all the hanging pumpkins get lit up, it's breathtaking. I mean, I know I jo- they joke about that word. Remember from that Seinfeld right. episode yeah. where kept saying breath? <laughs> but let me tell you, it like it it was one of the coolest zones to walk through every night because it like it, it captured Halloween the way you want it to capture Halloween. You know, it was just so fantastic the way they did it. Yeah, it was awesome. So let's give our rankings now, Brian. How do you want to do this? Do you want to like? 
each give our number one, each give our number two, or do you want to just one of us list all of them? How do you want to do this? I, I think we'll I go. Know, through, I actually. think let's go through. Like I'll just name my number one, and then you name and you def, and you name your number one, and we'll defend it. Okay. So, uh, my number one. You might be surprised by this one, Brian. My number one was Vamp eighty five. And I, wow, I, yeah. I know that's... I didn't spend a lot of time in the zone, but the reason I place this as my number one is because it was so epic in scope. It's a huge scare zone. Um, you got the st- you got a couple of stages. You got the ball dropping. I just thought the idea was so neat, and I loved the idea of like these prince vampires and Michael Jackson vampires walking around. They were they, they would come up to you and stuff. I thought that was just I just thought it was a cool concept for a scare zone. I had never seen it before. So original. That's why I put it as number one. Yeah, and and mine. It's funny. It was a, right after my uh, discussion of it, you're not gonna be surprised. I actually put Twisted Traditions as number one. Mostly because of that, how how in daytime it was so great, and when at nighttime it just blew you away. I don't. I love the original um, kind of the of of uh, scare actors and some of the set pieces and those stilt walkers, and just it was what was creepy about that is it was a very like it was kind of claustrophobic. It too. was. Like, it, was the, it was a very. It was like the the most claustrophobic scare zone. I think. Yeah, because it was a thin r- walkway, and so that made it look like some of the scare actors could end up right next to you when you thought it was like there was one time I swear to God I turned th- thinking I was talking to you, and it was one of the scare actors was next to me. So it was it was just that one I think just uh, I captured everything I you know I love about Halloween, and so I think that's why that's that that went to number one for me. Well, and I didn't think it was going to. I thought I was gonna uh, early on. I figured it was going to be Chucky number one, yeah. Killer Clowns number two, and I kind of had this pre, uh, like, uh, uh, I guess a reaction to what I thought I was going to like, and it was completely different. Uh, my number two was Twisted Tradition because aesthetically it was my favorite zone. In terms, I love the jack o' lanterns and the trees. It was if you see yeah. the pictures of it, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful scare. And zone. I- and I don't even think the pictures do it justice. They, do, they really you know? don't. No. It's hard to capture the um, the amazing look. I think it, it had the best scares of any of the scare zones yeah. in terms of actually things popping out at you because uh, the other zones were so wide. It was it was kind of hard to actually get scared. But this one, you could actually yeah. get scared with somebody jumped out of those hay, hay bales or something. So I put it. Was that the one where I got startled and you laughed because I like? I yeah. think I was like looking the other way and I could almost walked right into one. Yeah, of them or I think something. so. Now the, the reason I did not have it number one. The only reason is because of originality. It wasn't like in a very original type scare zone. Uh, most places have some kind of harvest scarecrow. Hand, right, right. Hand in that in that term, yes. I know I said like the original scare actors, yeah. but yeah, yeah. The, the exact placement, yeah, I agree. It was, it was, you know, everyone has like a, some kind of like barn harvest, yeah. whatever you want. But but they, I mean, Universal definitely did it the best, though. <laughs> yeah, no candy corn scarecrow, unfortunately. But No, that, I was looking for them, too. I had to knock points too. off for that. But yeah, yeah, I could have easily placed this number one and Vamp 85 as number two. They were that close. That's the thing. You're going to find out. As, and especially, I was doing these rankings like the, with the houses, too. I'm like, you know... This could be the, – they're so interchangeable, it's really hard to rank. Other than the, – there's a couple that stand out, obviously, as your number one. Right. But after that, they were all – I mean – Yeah, you can usually yeah, name the best and the worst, and the, the rest of them are, like, all equal. <laughs> Good. Yeah, really, it is. And, but we're going to try anyway to do – you know, do you a, do justice for you guys and give you a real true ranking. So, um, so my number two was actually – and I thought this was going to be – up there, but yeah, I didn't know if it was gonna be number two or three or whatever. But Killer Clowns, and I think mostly what won me over is I heard about the projection. I mean, the movie was always like you know, like I liked it. It was this funny, cheesy kind of thing, but it was never one of my overall favorites. But I think what pushed it up to the top for me so much. I mean, you've seen projections everywhere. Was the the scare actors and how good the costumes were. Like I, that was one of the things where you really felt like you could have been on the movie set yes. and they're filming yep. you. It was that well done, and like that the clowns are so good, not just with us, with the kids, with with everybody. They just they, they, they interacted great, and it were they weren't traditional scares like jump scares or anything. They just kind of wandered around and yeah. waddled around, and some of them would like pull like some of them would get together and do like group kind of scares and fun stuff. It was just one of the. Probably one of the most fun scare zones. Yeah, in terms too. of just pure interaction with the scare actors, I would have to say that that one was definitely tops. It was they they were just so good 
uh, kind of wandering around, which had to be hard. I mean, they, those are some big masks there with those guys. Oh are my wearing. god, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I had number three as Killer Clowns because I, I really wanted to put it way on up there, and we only have so many slots to fill. But yeah, that's the only it's reason hard. it's at number three. It's definitely not a third place type scare zone. It's it's no. way better than that. And actually, another thing I should say is not only did they have such great costumes. But there were so many different ones without repeats. Yeah. So it's they didn't just throw on clowns and make a different hat for it. No, these were all they were some with really long faces, really fat ones, female ones, like they pretty much older had every one ones. from the movie that I could think. Of. Yeah, every movie one was there, and then some. I think original, unless there were some background ones in the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to remember every clown, yeah. but like the big ones that you'll remember from the movie were in there for sure. But then there were some other ones, and it was just yeah. So what was your number three? My number three was, and this is tough because three and four to me were pretty much interchangeable, but I think um, maybe just because of the, the IP itself, I, I have Revenge of Chucky, um, just because I like the, you know, I, I just like the cool, how they took the IP and didn't just make it a hundred Chuckies around. Yeah. You know, they, they, they took the liberties and brought back classic toys and made them come alive. So it was really, I thought it had a good little uh, twist to it to add to, to make it a, a, like a legit scare zone. And the scare actors, as we mentioned earlier, especially they were so great with the kids, uh, especially, Dan- you know, Danielle, who stayed in character, who could have easily broken character by Tim's like, Hey, Danielle, you know, like, <laughs> but, but no, she, she stayed tough and, and, you know, and stayed, stayed true to character and just the, the cool little effects. It was very interactive. So that one just has a slight edge over the, of my number four. So, and, and like Tim said too, it's like, really, it could be like, I could sneeze and have the the, the change yeah. the, the order because it was that close but yeah my number four it looks like i'm one behind you on all these and my number four yeah. was <laughs> revenge of chucky um i and, and again it doesn't deserve a number four ranking because it's it was still really good it had some uh it was probably one of the wider bigger zones uh because of its location um, but it had, yeah. had some cool things like, of course, like the doctor you were talking about earlier, that's pulling uh, some good show pieces and it had some cool little sets. I think there was like a kitchen set or whatever, like a cupcake set that looked like it was like, oh, right, the, the, the easy bake oven, easy bake oven. But it had, yeah. it had a funny name to it. Yeah. And it was like, well, it looked like the kids were burnt in it. Yeah. <laughs> the, I think the only I reason that. I had this one so low on my list is because the other ones I enjoyed so much more. I only had so many slots. Um, but I really still really did enjoy the Revenge of Chucky scare zone. If I had any complaint, I would have wanted more Chucky. I wish I, I wish there had yeah. been at least one or two little Chucky's running around. But yeah, that's true. It's funny. A, a zone called Reven- Revenge of Chucky had the, so little of Chucky. I mean, other than that big the stage right. that had but the he good wasn't guys out dolls. all the time. So you, you right. know, I think we only saw him once the whole time we were there. Well, I think we might have saw him once from afar. Yeah. And then we said, "Oh, look, he's out. The puppet's out." But then we really couldn't get over there based on what we were, what we were, our agenda was at that moment. And then we got to see him uh, later when we, we we came back. It was right on our way out, and we decided to stop. And we we looked like stuff was gathering around, so we knew he was about to come out. So we we waited and saw him. But yeah. So number so. four for you. Uh, well, I, I mean, obviously, based on I think based on our discussion, we're going to know what our last yeah. one is. Yeah. It's no bad thing. So this one, of course, four is Vamp eighty five, and like I said, it's nothing to do with the, the because it was a great scare zone. I love that we caught the thriller performance, which was great. Even I remember Julie even liked that one. She goes, "Oh, look, they're doing thriller," and that was really cool. The New Year's Eve theme, and it was you know what was great about the scare zone? Its location because it was located in the New York section. Yes, yes, right by that f- that fake Central Park area they have there. And it just was really cool and very iconic to walk by and see it, you know, because you could see it throughout the day, the stage set up. And they just had a lot of great, like, some of the best scare actors there. And like I said, it's only number four because I think of the the, the love of the IP of Chucky kind of just and, – and they're so interchangeable in all honesty. They really are. I mean, I know you're going to hear us say that 50 times yeah. to the point you're like, all right, we get it. But it's hard <laughs> to rank these things. But yeah, so that that's where that's where it is. But not because – and like you said, it doesn't deserve a number four really yeah. either. It's just the other ones were so uh, I good. think it's a testament to how great the event was this year. And it's not yeah. always been like that for every past year from what I've read. I mean, this one, it was very – and I think I've seen other people say it too. It was very difficult. You might can say your first, your best house and your worst house, but the other ones are a toss-up almost. Yeah, um, it really is. So obviously, our, our Brian and I both – 
picked the harvest for our last one. Me because I didn't yeah. realize it was a scare zone. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, th- I like, like oh. almost forgot about it, um, and then I'm like, wait a minute, did we go through it? And I thought it was the other one, that one with Twisted Twisted Traditions. Yeah. But apparently we we got that it's one a, wrong. It's essentially a, a commercial. So I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really even see it as a scare zone, other than the fact it had a few generic scare actors here and there and like the I mean, chainsaw guys were there a lot i remember yeah, there's just no real theme to it though other than hey here's our houses that you're probably already going to go to anyway right kind of so so there's our scare zone uh, scare zones scare zone that's <laughs> why we need editing folks uh scare yeah. zone rankings um but man they, yeah lots of lots and lots of fun but not as fun as the houses oh my god yeah so let's go through our non-ip rankings these are right. our well, I think on the rundown, we had our overall thoughts. Our overall, I'll give you my overall thoughts. I thought yeah. there was one bum house. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very well played. And even then, it was a bum. It had a couple of things going going yeah. against it right off the bat, which was the whole parent swap fiasco and the weird line yeah, and the, but, just the, 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 the choices. But I will say, it, the second time we went through it, it grew on me a little more, but not enough to, to yeah. yeah. I think there was, still, still I think there was one house that was a clear last place. I think yeah. there were probably a couple of houses that were or two or three houses probably that are way up there. Yeah. Maybe even four. And yeah, I mean, I got news for you actually out of the, the, the other than the top two, which are going to be obvious, I think for the IP houses, three and four really are interchangeable. Yeah. And the fifth one is going to, is standing out just a little bit because of the, and actually it wasn't even the whole house, the beginning of that house. I liked, I didn't like the end of that house, which, which was the worst, but they should have almost done it in reverse. Yeah. So you got the better portion of it. Yeah. I think we're probably but, on the same page with that one, but then the yeah. rest of them are literally, literally almost a toss up. They're all so, so good. Yeah. And I've been reading a lot of rankings from other people that went to opening weekend and there's almost a, a complete agreement upon people upon which was the best house which was the worst yeah. house. And then numbers two through nine are all over the map, depending on people's yeah. run through. So we'll get to those. Um, so we're going to go through the non IP houses. These are the universal original houses. Right. I now know people always said people look forward more to the non IP houses. And I'm talking, I'm talking about like annual regulars, right? Always look more forward, more to the original houses over the IP. And now I understand why that's because your original houses are going to be the scarier ones. They're not right. trying to convey a movie plot. They're not trying to convey an IP. They, they're they free reign to do whatever they want. And that makes them much scarier, I thought, than the IP houses. Yeah. Uh, so I, I can certainly understand that. So here's my rankings for the non-IP houses. My number one, Brian, was Slaughter Cinema. I'm shocked. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Slaughter. That's my number one too, by the way. Yeah, Spoiler I alert. figured it so would we'll be. Just, Sla- yeah. I mean, Slaughter Cinema. So the concept of this that was made for us, basically. Yeah, the concept of this <laughs> house is you are walking through a series of grindhouse B horror movies with yeah. some and the fantastic sense of humor. The names of some of these uh, movies, like uh, there was um, uh, Cult of the Beast, Beast Baby. Baby and, yeah. Oh, so oh Siri just went crazy. That she, he heard. She, she heard you say beast she baby. Heard me say beast baby. Um, yeah, yeah, like uh, Cold of the Beast Baby, the Swamp Yeti. Obviously, I got the shirt of that one, which is our favorite. Yeah, uh, Tim and I had to buy Swamp yeah, Yeti. Uh, Barber <laughs> Chop, Pumpkin Guts, Amazon Cannibals <laughs> from Planet Terror. So it was like getting eight houses in one. That's how cool right. this one. Uh, I mean, even the buildup, though, going in with the drive-in set on the outside of the house. Right. And there was they detailed it on the outside online. Even before you went into each segment, it was almost like. A miniature haunt within a bigger haunt. Because you would go in. It might just be one room. In most cases, it was just one room to represent this house. But you would have this little drive-in speaker announcing the house. Usually a movie poster of it before you walked through the room. Oh, it was so cool. I mean, this house was amazing. It seemed really long because you're going through so many different sets. Um, But... uh, I guess we can both talk since I was both our number one, Brian. We can talk about yeah. what some of our favorite moments. But they had like a they had this one for um, a movie called Shitty's Kids. <laughs> yeah, which which Tim and I 
didn't even real we we didn't realize what the name was yeah. really until the second time we went through. Yeah, shitty being S C H I T T I E or whatever is like a name, but yeah, it was basically like a Chuck E. Cheese, right? Yeah, it was like so a, it a Chuck E. Cheese where the kids go uh, crazy and murder everybody. So you had this great, it looked like an old fashioned eighties uh, arcade type Chuck E. Cheese place. You had like a head in the crane machine. You had oh um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that you was had great. like people like murdered in, all over the birthday table. Had one of the best scares in the house, I think, which was that girl that would that would come charging out of the side and scream oh, yeah. at you. Like she got me the first time, big time. Well, well, that was also the one where I nearly accidentally. So okay, so we should preface this. Uh, there's rumors all around that these houses have hidden red buttons that you press. And when you press it, something happens, like a bonus feature, like I think water squirts or a horn will go off or a light will flash. So I was obsessed with this. You know, what's got to tell me is look for a hidden thing. So I was literally hitting everything that was red or looked red or looked like a button. And so I'm going in this one and I go – I forgot what section of the house is. It may have been actually in that room. So – and there's one of those boo doors where – there's like an eye thing, and I think they want you to actually p- go up really close to put your eye in. Yes. And then the thing flies open, and the girl goes, ah, and screams really loud. Yes, and that one got me too. Yeah, So, but I thought that was a button. So I literally go to push the button, and she pops out, and which basically mi- almost had me poke her in the eye. <laughs> but she did not break character. She didn't even stop. She just went, ah. And it like it actually it didn't startle me as much as it should have because I was like so scared that I almost hit her <laughs> with my finger. But it was such a great scare. So I'm like, oh my god, that scare would be brilliant if someone didn't screw it up like me. <laughs> yeah, uh, they had um one of my other favorites was like the uh, the barber shop got got me. There was one where it was like had these dead people in barber chairs, and this barber came charging out of the side. I did not see him coming. He got yeah the, the swamp yeti got me the second time because. Supposedly there were like three Swamp Yetis in there, and they it would almost like he came out from the floor. And he <laughs> didn't, but it was like I was looking at because there's so much to see. What what I think what benefits them to the scare actors in this because every square inch of these houses are so detailed. There's not like dead space anywhere, so you're always looking at something, and you next thing you knew you turn and there's literally this hulking Swamp Yeti standing in front of you. As if he came out of nowhere, and it, like, and I jumped back a little bit because I did. I like he was towering over me. Not that that's that hard, but still. oh, there's one. Uh, and it was just. I think we left one off the rundown, um, Brian. But there was one segment that was like a biker bar, like it was a Wolfman oh, biker yeah, thing. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. Was that was an incredible set? It looked yeah. like you had just walked into this dive bar, biker bar dive place. That's like, true. Like an old pinball and, machine and a. Oh yeah, and the arcade games in the other place were like legit, like yeah, arcade it was incredible. cabinets. Incredible! Like this, this is the kind of stuff. This is why Universal houses are are so much better. They just have the the budget to put in real right. props. That yeah, are just they're they're movie set quality. Yeah, they really are. They really are. Um, and they make it so it's a three dimensional movie set quality. It's not like where you look and look around the band and say, oh, it's only half of a video game cabinet. No, they put a full video cabinet in there, and they take as a full table and chairs that they break in pieces to put to look like destruction. I mean, they they, they just go to the, the nines of the theming. Like as like they do for their rides, they treat their houses the same yeah, way. Yeah, you don't see a lot of shortcuts. I mean, it's, it's very detailed. No, very not detailed. at all. Um, but so anyway, I don't, I don't know how much in the weeds we want to give a slaughter cinema, but it was just, yeah. it was just such a fun, fun house. It had yeah. great scares. It had a great sense of humor. It had great variety. I just love the variety of walking through all these movies. Yeah. So that's why it was my absolute number one for the non IP. Yeah. Same here. And I, and I had a feeling it was going to be just from the, 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 when Tim and I first early, saw it announced, we're like, Oh my God, this thing is so meant for us with this. And you know, the fact that like they only announced like three of the parody movies when they first announced slaughter cinema. Oh, pumpkin guts was one yeah, too. Pumpkin guts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, uh, so we were like, we were already looking forward to this. And then the fact that they added all these other ones and like, uh, like, uh, the swamp Yeti, which we totally thought could be a total Kickstarter <laughs> for civil gore. Now, one but, thing I want to mention when we're talking about the budget, it's not just the budget. One thing that Universal's houses do that a lot of regional parks can't afford to do or can't do is they will add audio. Oh, so, yeah. and it's timed so that as you're walking through certain segments, the audio syncs to where you are. And the IP houses is very noticeable because they actually have dialogue from the movies 
yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. That That's really cool. And they will also even pipe in smells. To oh, my areas. God. Especially in, when we get to Scary Tales. That was a big... Uh, big plus on that right, one yeah so that that's kind of the enhancement it's not just your sight you're also getting your other senses assaulted and, and perfectly timed as you walk which they can do because you're in a conga line wh- right which they can't really and do when ins- they pulse you in like a regional house where you have spaces yeah and which which you know you figure when you hear that oh conga line you're like oh that's gonna be weak because they're gonna always be jumping out and you'll see the scares but they do a phenomenal job of not always changing it up and and we'll we'll go the, as the RIP host told us but when we get to that is that she told us some little tricks that they use too with that yeah so my number two was seeds of extinction that is my number two as well ah Look well that. the reason that I, and Tim and I did not talk no about we did this not we potentially did not talk my. I picked Seeds of Extinction not only because I traumatized my son with it, but yeah, <laughs> um, it it was one of the most surprised I've been in a house because I did not expect this one to be high on my list at all. Me either, and, um, not at all. I thought this was going to be my one of my weakest, right? Ones, actually, and it's uh, the theme is neat. It's like your plants have basically taken over the world, but you go in this house and it feels so claustrophobic. You. It's oh wet. God, yeah. It's like they, they put moisture in the air. and, and it's all... Does that smell of like the swamp or cut? Something, yeah. Right? And the thing I loved about this house is unlike a lot of the other houses here, you can't see the boo doors where the people are going to pop oh, out. Like no, you, you do not. <laughs> I could not tell where I was going to get assaulted from next. It's a very loud house. There's lots of loud noises. Lots of people just coming out of the walls, literally, because they're dressed as plants, yeah. so you can't tell whether they're props or they're people. Uh, oh, man, this one, to me, was the scariest house. Yeah, it was there. probably the most immersive in terms of the environment, just, like, taking over you to the where you, you really... It was actually f- difficult some places to where you were supposed to turn, even, because... There was so many, like... It was like every square inch was covered in this moss plant whatever you want to call it right it was one of those houses that you know a lot of the houses i go in and i'm like oh i wish i could hang out in this room for a little while like that house i did not want to hang out anywhere like you feel oppressive yeah it's like you feel like you have to keep moving and and another thing is it's funny if you think about it and, and you break down the house if you do enough haunts like tim and i do it's literally the 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 scare tactics they use are basically the same as those corn stalker mazes where you're surrounded in a maze of corn and 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 hay and the characters are dressed up as those things and they pop out but this since it was inside it was they had like it was so like it had it covered over you and around you and behind you and the sounds were so in your face like it was deafening in there yeah. and dark and, and, I mean, hence I lost my selfie stick. I didn't even feel it fall out of my pocket because it was just so, like, the end of, the, like you said, the floor was kind of spongy. And it was just every square inch of you and every sight and sense you had was immersed into the house, like, unlike any other ones. And that's what I think just propelled this one. And I did not expect, and we did it twice. And the second time was even better. Yeah. I think. Honestly, I don't know. I don't think the kids would have had a problem with some of the houses we went into no some of them, i think I they think would have been were, fine yeah like i think yeah. we could have like taken them through maybe blumhouse and they would have been scary tales i think they would yeah, have been fine they would have been with. okay but this one man yeah. was just intense even for me it was an intense home yeah i think we just made that was our one true tactical <laughs> yes, error that was, that was big <laughs> on this trip. so speaking of scary tales that was my number three See, oh, that was mine too, actually. Okay, well, there you yeah, go. So, yeah, so yeah. Scary Tales, the concept of this one, this is a house that has been featured at Universal before, and they just kind of yeah. change it up every now and again. So this one has been a mm-hmm. theme before. And it's, as you would might expect, it's like twisted, evil versions of fairy tales. Now, I am... Yeah, like she said, like if the witch won, basically. Right, picture yeah. that. Yeah. Now, I was disappointed that we, this is one of the few houses we did not go through more than once. This one we only got to see right. once on our RIP tour. Because yeah. the sets in this one are phenomenal. Like, they're... Yeah. Visually, this is probably one of the most visually stunning houses in terms of, like, the big sets. It's in a really big building. Um, the scare actors are really elaborate in this one. Yeah. Uh, like, for instance, when you come in, there's a witch that's on, like, a bungee so she can actually like, and she's like above you. Yeah, she's yeah. like way above you. She can actually swing down and over your head. 
And she swoops, she could swoop right by you. And one of the guys, like, I went right by him. I saw, like, we got ours. She kind of swooped right over. But she, she would change her path. So, she, you know, sometimes she'd swoop at you. Sometimes she'd swoop around you, above you. It's like, it was like she had a lot of control over the bungee. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. And this one was kind of in, in terms of, like, we were talking about Slaughter Cinema, the, the variety. This one, because of the concept of you're walking through different fairy tales, also had that kind of variety, which was cool because you had, like, the three little pigs and Humpty Dumpty and and they pumped in bacon in the pig. Yeah, did you notice that? Yeah, I did notice and, that. And then the and the Hansel and Gretel had the cookie smell because it was that they didn't make it out. Of yeah, the they house were in the oven. The, um, this, yeah. this one actually had the only time I saw Olivia actually get startled. Was yeah, she does not. Her and Julie, they, they just don't get startled. Yeah, they, they don't. They don't get scared at all. Uh, the Little Mermaid sequence. There's oh, a yeah, segment the where um, there is a uh, there's like you know, like seaweed and stuff floating around. And there was these people like in these weird fish masks. And one of them jumped out at Olivia and it scared her. Like she's startled. And that was, I was so happy <laughs> that she, <laughs> she had finally gotten scared and yeah. she even admitted it. So that that's yeah. why that's props off to this house. They're one of the few houses that scared her. When it made you feel like you were underwater too at that sequence, it was like you were supposed to be underwater, and the and they were like sirens and, and yeah, the there was even um, and... there was even a tank with actual water in it. Like at one point, I yeah, saw you have bubbles right. coming yeah, up. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was so cool. Yeah, I wish I really out of all the houses, I wish I had had another run through. Um, right, this one was probably the tops. On, on. I, yeah, that's the only. Yeah, and I think that may have been why it's down to. I mean, granted, then again, I love Slaughter Cinnamon Seeds of Extension so much. I think it would have always kind of stayed at three, but it would have been a, like a higher three, even. Yeah, I guess it would have been even more difficult to put it at a three. Because of its in yeah, the the set pieces were so immer- and it was like that castle set yeah kind of you walk through it was just really cool. There was like a, even a lion animatronic in there. It was really cool. So. That yes, and that was another thing that universe through a lot of the houses they had some of the best animatronics you've ever seen in a haunt. Yeah, I mean because they could obviously there's where your budget can really help. <laughs> um, now of our course. four and five may switch. I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. My four was dead exposure patient zero. Nope. We are on, where I look like we're going to be dead on no pun intended on this whole thing because that was mine too. Okay. So dead exposure again. This is another house. I really regret not getting a second run through because uh, as you might know with universal houses, you are in a conga line there. There is a chance yeah. that your timing might just be off where you don't get any of the scares. And right. that's what happened with me with dead exposure. I was, um, the girl in front of me was getting hit every time with every <laughs> scare. Now, I remember her jumping back, like almost yeah, into you. But, I mean, great for her. She had a great run yeah. to the house. But for me, I actually saw every scare coming. So they would skip yeah. me and go to the person behind me. So I really never got scared in this house, even though it's billed as one of the scariest, if not the scariest house. Yeah, I, I was a little disappointed because what I heard was it's pitch black only yeah. by strobes. But the strobes were so much that it never seemed pitch I black. Never, yeah, I was kept waiting. Even our tour guide said there's one segment here that's pitch black two or three seconds of total darkness i never saw it i was looking for i it. yeah i don't think i saw it either i mean i thought maybe it was but the thing is you could see the flash right around the corner so it's not like you can't see yeah i, I will say it had one of one of the coolest sequences though was that scene in the subway when everything with the strobes were going and there were characters in there that were kind of appearing and disappearing yeah and you weren't sure and supposedly they, were gonna... they the scare actors know how to time it so that the, they're they move during the black part of the strobe so they can oh, jump okay. out at you. But the the theme of this one was you were, uh, it was like a zombie outbreak in Paris or something. And this was a sequel too, right? This, this was, was a sequel, a, uh... yeah, to another fan favorite original house uh, that had happened a few years ago. Now this one, don't get me wrong, even though I wasn't yeah. scared in this house, it was a very intense house. I mean, oh, yeah, strobes yeah. everywhere, very aggressive scare actors. Um, yeah. And, and very disorienting because of the strobes. The sets weren't very... Um, uh, like there, it it wasn't. It was very easy to lose your way and get disoriented in this one because it, it was just so constantly intense and you had so yeah. so many things coming at you. So I would have loved to have gone through this house again because I think it was probably phenomenal. Yeah, I, I mean it's like. Run. Yeah, and it wasn't just like you know. I know every every place has like a zombie house, but this was probably this one was like it was still up like ten notches above every other zombie house that you see. Yeah, and it it really is like 
in hindsight, I wish we would have, yeah, gone to this and Scary Tales. Even like we almost got through everything twice. Almost, yeah. But and we probably could have. Uh, we just, you know, it, being rookies at this, we we probably could have. We could have easily done all ten houses. The first we could have forced yeah. it, yeah. It, but you know what? It's like you know, it is what it is. I mean, I don't really don't regret much on this trip because I, ha- I still, like I said, I had one of the best times ever on a vacation, or for, uh, especially theme park wise. You know, it's like. So, and this was Tim and I's our bucket list forever. So <laughs> yeah. like the fact that we got to go together and we got such a we got arguably a lot of people saying this is one of the best years they've ever had. Yeah, I've heard so, many people say that. So yeah, uh, the people that have gone like forever too. Yeah, these are regulars so, that live in Orlando. Yeah. Um, so number five, of course, for both of us yeah. was Carnival Graveyard. Rest in pieces. This was probably my biggest. Di- I keep calling it Carnival of Evil. I, I don't said, know why I keep I calling it Carnival. I even put that on my yeah. Twitter. I did. And I was like. Uh, I was, I was yeah, like, I'm too lazy okay. to go fix it. That just shows how it was. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? This one, this one gets five because I think I this one had was up there. I figured this was going to be a shoe in for one or two. Right. It's big. A it theme was based park off fans. a theme park. Yeah. Right. And from what I understand, one of the biggest selling points, a lot of the Easter eggs, which is hard to appreciate on one run through of a house. Yeah. And like of like this kind of house, I should say. I just found the, the IP ones are easier, but I I, I can't. I don't remember much about this house. Now, granted, I had more than a few drinks <laughs> by the time I had yeah, gone through this true. one. But I, yeah, I remembered much night. more of Scary Tales, which was around the same time we went through this one. Yeah. And uh, I just, it's got, it's neat in that it has some really big sets. It's in a big yeah. building and the sets are huge. And it's it's basically a junkyard. It's a, it's a carnival yeah. junkyard is what you're walking through. But I just didn't... I always thought it was too spaced out. I didn't. I didn't really get a lot of scares. The red button stuff was cool. There were some red buttons like yeah. you push. You might get. It, was that what you got squirted? Yeah. Or I got no, squirted. I got One squirted of us in got the squirted. butt. Like I got. Soaked. Oh, that's right. You got. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it was because right. I pushed the button or the guy in front of me did. But um. Well, remember she did say if you press the butt button, move away. So yeah, it may have been us because we were hitting. That, I was hitting that thing fifty times. Uh, so, but so. you know, you got carny folk jumping out at you, and there was there yeah. was some cool little things here and there. But I was expecting like this house to blow me away, and it just yeah, didn't. same same here. I, yeah, I was. This is the one I was like, and I hate to say di- use the word disappointment because nothing really was a disappointment. It just, I thought it would be like, yeah, I mean, I really thought that was going to be like rival slaughter cinema for the you know, battle between one and two, yeah. you know, and it. And granted, and if, it we, just, if we'd gone through it again, we might have had a totally different experience. Right, right. It is. Yeah. And that's a tip, I would say. You know what? You kind of, you can't do this in one night. You should almost pick two nights. We got to buy one, get one free night. So that's how yeah. it worked out that we got two. That's the way to do it. Um and hell, I even say do do what we did, express one night, but just do it like you know, do a little more efficiently, and then the RIP tour, yeah. one of the other, I'd nights, argue maybe even the other order. The RIP but, tour is great for seeing all the houses, but you're gonna want to see them again. You really are. Right. You could get a bad run, like I did through Dead Exposure, and and feel disappointed in it. Whereas you might go through it again and have a great time. So yeah, you really need to see these more than once. Yeah. Um. So that's the uh, non-IP houses. Um, and it's funny that we ranked them this similarly, but that yeah. doesn't really surprise me because I think, yeah. um, I think we both had kind of similar experiences there. And I yeah. Well, we were right next to each other too. Yeah, so true. Like, that's true. We had, we, but that's, that is a good point. We, we all had virtually the same run. Uh, yeah. In terms of like what I mean, we swapped them. a little like sometimes we put Julie in front because they seem to not scare her and they would come after us. Yeah. So we thought that might've helped, but. Yeah, so but I I'm, I'm interested. To say, I bet you we're going to be on this ranking, probably almost the same, except three or four may swap. I don't uh, know. That's the only yeah, one I could think of. We'll see. Okay. But well, we'll see I think what it is. I think we both know our number one. Number one, yeah. By far. And we said that from after we saw yeah. it right away. We're the like, we okay, I don't think anything's beating yeah. this. <laughs> Poltergeist surprise. Yeah. Wow, definitely the surprise. I I thought. Yeah. I expected a lot of things out of Poltergeist because it's one of my favorite movies. I thought it was going to be a killer house, but I figured, you know, it'll be middle of the pack. Like, I didn't, because yeah. what are you going to do? Really, what are you going right. to do with Poltergeist? Yeah, okay, the clown under the bed. Guy yeah. peeling his face off. Well, I mean, are you going to make a whole house out of that? Oh, yeah, they yeah. made a whole house out of it. Yeah. So, And they, they basically used this IP to perfection. Oh, my gosh. It was so, so cool. And if you go out and look on YouTube, 
don't go look at the Hollywood version because it is very different from the Orlando version. It is not nearly as good. It does have some. Oh, of yeah, the, you said it's not. A, yeah, you yeah. said it didn't have the same stuff. It has right? some of the same set pieces here and there, but the the intro it doesn't do any of the intro like ours does. So, so I have to describe this house. You, yeah, I think this one. This is going to be full spoiler. Yeah, this one because spoiler. you have to understand how great you, this was. You're walking in. You're going to start out under the ground of the house in the burial ground in the swimming pool yeah. and you're going to which i thought was so cool oh, that they did that way yeah and then you're going to come up through the house and you're eventually going to go to the other side um but you come into this building like it took I, literally breathtaking again it took my breath away when we first walked in to this set and you look up and you see a full set of the house up yeah. on this hill to scale so it looks like it's up above you and you're going to walk under into the earth where these yeah. dead bodies are and some great scares in there. I mean, you're walking, there's roots dangling down. It feels like you're underground in soil. There's like rotted people jumping out at you. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just like, and like I went away, went in there and like, I expected it to be like the follow chronologically the movie. Right. And they completely flipped around. And actually, it was funny. If you think about the way they did the scares, you start off at the end and kind of end with the end doing right. a little bit, you know, because they put the, 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 the clown moment towards the end, but which had happened in the movie like that. So, yeah. But so then you go into the house proper. Um, it's just some cool things here. Like the guy peeling his face off, which that was a cool sequence because they have th- there's a dummy in the mirror. Peeling yeah. his face off, but there's a real scare actor on the other side, just out of sight. So you think you're yeah. just looking at a dummy. In fact, the first run through, I believe, I never saw the scare actor. I didn't either. Yeah, it was it was the second one that I saw. Him yeah, move. but the yeah. second one, he can he jumps out at you. There was a thing we, me and Brian both noticed the second run through. There's a stake that moves oh, across yeah. the counter. We didn't even realize that happened. Which that looks so realistic. I mean, it looked. Look, I mean, it literally. You did not see any like string or any effect like underneath the table. It literally. It must have been done by magnets or something yeah. because that thing like crawled along <laughs> the counter. We both like stopped and we're like, what? oh my god, look at that! I think we stopped the whole conga line because yeah, we were so, there was like, um. Impressed. I was trying to think of some of the other cool sequences. There's, there's a sequence where you see a door, and they use some oh, kind of like yeah, that was one of my favorite projection effect where the door looks like it recedes down the hallway, and you can see like the other side light coming through it. Uh, they had a um, what's her? Oh, and I love when you first saw Carol Ann. She's like above you, and you walk under her, and she's like looking at the TV. Yeah, I mean, she's like they're here, you know, and like it was just really well done. Oh, and the, the best is the, the with the, even what Tim mentioned before about the dialogue. So when you, as you're walking into the house, you hear the camera he goes, "You got rid of the headstone, but you kept the body." Like yeah. it's like with wind blowing it, like you hear it faint enough that you hear it but it's not overpowering you hear the wind and everything you just hear him screaming as if he was caught in the, the windstorm it's really cool um the uh there's a sequence where you know the the mom get away from my baby yeah, She's yeah. Screaming. you got the uh the kid being attacked by the clown you had the uh, tree was in the wind through the window yeah, the tree was through the window you, you walk through his bedroom there's a uh, there's tons of those like animatronic that i don't know what you even call it that big skeleton looking thing that would come yeah out the whatever that creature was yeah it was like and they, those were popping out and they were you, big like, moving huge like yeah i don't know if they're even animatronics but puppets i think they're more like puppets that people were being yeah. operated uh from behind um and then you like go through the other side so you go through this is such a neat effect you go through this like tunnel of like billowing white sheets and it's just like you're kind of going through this tunnel and uh brian didn't see this because he walked right past it but there was like scare actors on the other side that would that would occasionally reach out through the sh- through the gauze and I want to say I saw that on the first time. Yeah, one of them the got me one. really good. <laughs> but uh, and then you would go through. Th- I mean, I will say probably my only complaint with the house, which is very minor, is yeah. that the the ending is maybe a little weaker than the rest of the house because you you you. It's a little anticlimactic by the time you get. Yeah, there, because possibly, you've but... gone through all this cool stuff, and then you go through this sequence. It's basically just a kind of a nightmarish vision of the clown. Yeah, like a giant clown, remember that? Yeah. Like he flashes on Of a giant clown. So you're kind of going through kind of like a black walls and you have like some clown arms hanging down and stuff. It was kind of yeah. a kind of a little bit of a letdown from the rest of the house. But overall, man, this house, in terms of creative use of the IP, 
Yeah. And number of scares and cool effects, cool animatronics, great scare actors. I mean, this house had everything you could ever want in a haunt. And this kind of ruins other haunts. It, yeah, it was it was so <laughs> like, impressive. You're never gonna get something that's that good. No, it was really it was like so, that so kind. Impressive. I could not wait for our IP tour to go through this one again. I was. So I crazy. know. I was. That was the one I was looking forward to because Olivia had not gotten through that one. You, you, me, and Julie did that first yeah. night, and that was the one I was like, "Oh, I can." We were both like, "We can't wait till Olivia sees." And this, this one. one, believe it or not, had posted higher wait times than Stranger Things at many it points did. during the evening. I think it got word of mouth it did. after that yeah. Friday, and I think people like started to go like see everyone talk about it, and they were like, "Okay, let's go see it. Let's go see it." And and I would argue this was the scariest IP house too oh yeah definitely definitely the other ones weren't i mean there may be one that was close but only if you you know just because of the the good the, the proximity but we'll explain that when we get to the house yeah so you know, um, the closeness i here. believe our number two will probably match up as well so my number yeah. two was stranger things yes yes um stranger now this one was more of just like wasn't even scary it was just so damn impressive I yeah think. It was, i like this one there, there were some scares with the demogorgons popping out yeah but it, this one really was not meant to i don't think it was really meant to be super scary per se but it was meant to just evoke the feeling of the television show right and that i think this was oh universal showing off their budgets yes it was it was yeah. fantastic so you basically you go in through Hawkins Lab, um, you go through the um, Winona Ryder's house. It was house. like the show. Yeah, it was like the show because you walked in and there was a sequence you saw, and then as you're right through it, would like do 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 do, and you saw it say Stranger Things up on the big screen, like you were in an episode. Yeah, that was which neat. I thought was a really cool touch. <laughs> Lots of great use of sound in this in this one in terms of dialogue. You had um, yeah. scare actors that were representing the kids, and they would come out oh and they would like God. mouth to the actual dialogue. And sync to they it. look so much like them. Oh that was God. crazy. Like the, the kid turned around that was playing Will, and it, he might have been. Oh a, my he God, might have yeah. actually been a girl in real life. But it might, yeah, I think it was. Whoever yeah. they got looked just like Will. Like it. Like I was actually shocked for a second. We'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Brian's got a good story about that. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like the kids and actors, like the guy that played the sheriff was spot on. They had, oh yeah, Hopper was great. Um, Eleven. It was funny. It was never. A, it was only a. Uh, um, like an animatronic or mannequin. They never actually had a real Levin, did they? No, they Until did. The, the very end. They... end she oh, that's right. The very yeah. end. That's right. She was standing there. That's right. Um, I forgot. One cool sequence is when you go into the Upside Down, there's like this ash falling like it was in the TV show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, Yeah, this house just, if you were a fan of the show, like this house was so yeah. cool. And they had one effect, which I thought was fan- fan- uh, yeah. uh, was uh, uh, fantastic, was towards the end when you're in the school and you're looking at the wall of the of the hallway where it has that cubs like the cub yes, bear cub logo yes. and it looked like a real wall and as you got closer it became transparent the demogorgon was behind yes, it yes that was a cool cool scare I, and i was like oh my god cuz i like i was the first night i walked almost right past it cuz i was just trying to catch up and I almost passed one of the coolest features in it because, you you know, you – and this one is like – it really is. This is like a showpiece more than it is a, a trying to scare you in any way. I mean there were startling moments because, you know, they would act out the movie. Like the, the people when they were all in those like the suits yeah. were coming out with those things and they had their faces lit up. And like when Hopper popped out the first time, it kind of startled me a little because he came from behind me. And they, and they basically have their set scenes and they don't – deviate from it because it's time to a soundtrack so if you're in their way they're gonna just walk like yeah. as close to you as possible and get around you which we'll mention in a future house yeah, which yeah. was tim's tim's favorite moment uh, probably yeah the so uh, yeah stranger things was really cool it lived up to my expectations yeah. i am shocked that poltergeist beat it out for number one house i did too but i um, did too but yeah I'm, I'm really i'm still really happy with stranger things house it was oh yeah. i didn't expect it to really be scary because the show's not actually that scary yeah but um but just for doing fun, for what yeah. it was which is giving you a feel like you're in an episode i thought it was fantastic yeah, I thought another great touch was just like the the you know you could tell the people that did it was like they 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 I see a lot of people say they call it they nickname it the fan service house and it was but of course but like one of the coolest things when you go into um the brother's room and it's doing that like well uh, should I stay or should I go yeah. and it's you know it's playing that on the radio and just like little details like that and they even have like you know when you walk through um what I liked is the when you go through um you know Nona Ryder's house. 
they don't just walk you through it as a set piece. They have you go around the table so you really get close to all the elements in the house of so like her breaking down the wall to get outside and the lights on the with yeah, the alphabet. That's another thing that differentiates this from other like a regional haunt where your path is so set. You know, you're going yeah. through a very narrow path. A lot of these sets like you're walking around in this room. Now granted, you're in a conga line. You're not going to like stray off anywhere. But you do feel like you're walking around furniture and stuff, which is kind of neat. Yeah, and that one, that I think that sequence more than any of the other houses really felt like that. Because it was not happening, you were you were literally in the set piece. Yeah, you were walking around surrounded. a coffee table and then going down a hallway, like a woodland yeah. hallway. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was really neat. Um, yeah, and of course, obviously, Demogorgon's a plenty, which was great. So. Yeah. <laughs> the Demogorgon costumes were really good. for To be a yeah. guy in a suit, they were really, really good. Yeah, and I still think one of the best guys, the, Dust, the one that played Dustin, was so good. Yes, it was a girl playing him, but she had the hat, the outfit, and the curly hair, and everything. And she, and the fact that they mouthed the actual dialogue they play, yeah. really helps cement the, um, the realism. In fact, the R.I.P. tour guy mentioned that they do a really good job with the makeup in making them look like the actual celebrity. Right, so, and right. I mean, and granted, you're in low light conditions, and you're only seeing them for a brief moment. Like some of these look spot on. Um, yeah. So my number three, Brian. Uh, we're going to see whether it matches up with you. Yeah. My th- number three was Trick or Treat. Yep. Mine too. We may have an <laughs> exact think, five for five I again. A, I, yeah, I think we're going to have a 10 for 10 matchup here. Yeah, we one really we will. Did, yeah. One thing we disagreed on was Scare Zones, but uh, Trick or yeah. Treat was obviously one of our favorite films yeah. for Halloween. Uh, this one was a house developed out of a Scare Zone that was very popular last year. And yeah. Uh, this one was interesting. I do have a complaint about this one. I think it's the same complaint you're going to argue as well, Brian. Um, but yeah, it takes you through a lot, like an extended sequence with Sam, where you know the guy with the shotgun fighting Sam. Um, you go through. All- yeah, he comes right out right away. That's the first like startle that you don't expect. I think. Yeah, and some great scares in this part. There's a brief segment where you go through like the werewolf type sequence where um yeah you go through like the city streets kind of thing that was kind of cool and then finally you you wrap things up with the bus sequence the bus full of kids see there's where i would have personally if it was up to me i would have had you walk through the bus yes i will here's they, here's my whole criticism of this house now fantastic house i loved it we, we yeah. actually went through this one three times i believe yeah actually that's right we got a third got a time, third time. Yeah. this is the house we went through the most not but not by choice really but just by yeah. circumstance but right. um and I've heard other people say this too, and I think I heard you mention it earlier in the episode. This house should have been reversed. Yeah. Um, they put all the scares with Sam up front, which is really the climax of the film. Uh, and they put those up front of the house. And then you go through the werewolf thing, which is cool. I like the yeah. werewolf stuff. But then you end with the the bus sequence, which was probably one of the weaker um least memorable segments of the movie i mean i know the movie backwards and forwards so it's not i mean i liked it because it was i thought it was the the people were the kids were on the bus were kind of creepy but but there was not a lot of scares like the sets yeah in the end because they had to accommodate these big buses the scare actors were spaced really far apart right So there was a lot of dead air as you were walking through those sets so it just did not compare to the first front of the house so it, it really lost steam and lost energy over the course as you went through it well, and they did use they did use the same prop from the scare zone with the kid throwing up. I remember seeing that yeah. last year in a video, but it was still well done. And they had the the, the 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 smells of stuff, and you know they had the crazy father with the you know they always check your candy like the yeah. principal and stuff. Which at but one point just, was yeah. played by like this this guy this kid looked like he was twelve years old. I was like, yeah, was that yeah. supposed to be the father? I was like, <laughs> really? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, I noticed <laughs> that too. And. I, it was funny. There were some cool things with Sam, like some cool effects. Like one time we saw him at the top of the stairs and he'd disappear and then he'd reappear through effect. So, I mean, there were st- cool things in it. But, and, and you know, maybe it was a detriment that we did go through it three times that we could start to nitpick. Right, I don't know. Yeah. And it's still, like I said, it's still one of my favorite movies, which is why it's it's there and it's still so high up because they they did a great – the Sams were great in it. And it was really represented well, and and I love the 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 cool poster as you walked in. You walked in through like a house kind yeah. of thing. So it was just, and like they said, there was a beginning. We learned on the R.I.P. tour. There's like a stationary st- Sam right when you walk in, and you expect it not to be. And bo- all three times we walked in, it was. But she said sometimes they replace it with an actor yeah. for people that go through it a lot. And I'm like, boy, we just bummed out. Then. <laughs> 
Yeah, I we went three was, for three with the sta- stand, the statue one. If, if you love the movie, you would love you would love this house. Yeah. I just think it it needed to be reorganized. But right, I would have right. I would have put the whole Sam sequence at the end. Right, like he should have been like maybe you should have like seen him like in little like little quick things in the beginning, like you did in the real movie where he was like you know you weren't sure what he was and. All. But then, you know, but it was good, though. It, 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 see, when we got, when, with the RIP host, she kind of said that, uh, you know, she kind of said, oh, it's the five rules, don't break the fire. So I think they were taking a little liberties to the way they wanted to present the house. So, I mean, maybe that got a little lost in the way it was, because, you know, if you're looking at it as a movie aspect, uh, according to the other IP houses, it didn't follow closely right. as much, I guess, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it's still a great house. I, I feel bad that we sound like we're like, bashing it but we're not at all well i think when you start getting into number three just like you know you have some this is where you start getting some criticism creep in right it gets you know you start getting as you go down the rankings so um the next house i had was halloween four at number four same same here of Um, course yeah this was so much more fun than i thought it was gonna be actually yeah this this one i'm torn on this one because i love halloween i love michael myers i love the idea that i got to go through a michael myers house is phenomenal like i love that uh i know regulars to halloween horror nights are kind of burned out on because they've already had halloween mazes um i did have some major criticism with this house although i did have some cool things too like i loved that um they started out i was wondering how they were going to do a halloween four house because it's kind of hard in terms of a movie plot how how do you do that but they started out with him escaping from the mental institution so that was kind of cool so you had some yeah and the first version of him was remember in the in the, the bandages yeah which he I still had the bandages really cool. so that you had a probably a fairly extended segment of just being in there before you yeah. start getting into where you know he's kind of attacking from other angles you have a lot of dr loomis um <laughs> so i guess we should point out there this was yeah. one of those things where so there's a sequence where Michael is supposed <laughs> to step out in front and Loomis starts shooting him. And uh, there was a sequence where we were walking behind Julie and Julie basically walks right to the middle of the firefight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of has to do this like back up. To avoid. Like a matrix maneuver. Yeah, she like does this crazy like complete back up to I guess to avoid being shot by the imaginary bullets. That were being yeah. Fired. <laughs> that was kind of funny too that she was dodging imaginary bullets. Yeah, uh, but it was hilarious. Uh, it, it, and Julie is like completely unperturbed. Like she yeah. doesn't even flinch. She just like walks right into between the firefight between Michael Myers and Loomis and just slowly yeah, backs away. It, it's like it doesn't even do it justice to tell you. It's like it, it had to be seen. It was yeah. so we we were doing impressions watch. of it the entire trip afterwards. Yeah, so you have it was, to. It was maybe great. we have to do a video of it or something. But anyway. we should. Yeah, we need to. <laughs> um, we need my, to get there. here's my criticism with this house. And this sounds like a crazy criticism. There was way too much Michael Myers in this house. There were there were parts where you you almost saw both scare oh, actors at the same right. time. Like there were so yeah, many Michael Myers. Like one would be jumping out at you, and you could see the other one jumping out of somebody up ahead. And you're like, wait a minute. There's only yeah. one of these. So supposed to be one of these guys. Like they they were trying to pack so much Michael Myers in this house that it was almost comical at some yeah. point, at some level. Well, I figured, you know, they probably figured, like, what else are they going to jump out at you here? Yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, yeah. I wish they had more I mean, Jamie. There was a cool Jamie scare at one point. Oh, yeah, was, yeah. Well, she, she, and th- th- and that, that they got, I mean, it's not really hard to get a girl with long black hair, I guess, or a short girl to get play that role. So that was that looked really realistic. And the Loomis, I thought, was actually pretty good, the one that they had in there. Yeah, I guess my, I guess my biggest problem with this one is the sets weren't very interesting either. Compared to a lot of the other sets, because I mean, yeah. if it's going to take place in a mental institution, you know, there's not the sets were. Well, very actually, did bland. have the, the creepy people jumping out though in the beginning too. Remember, there was the the other inmates. Yeah, one of those of... got really got me. But overall, yeah. the set design was just very bland to this one compared to the other houses, mm-hmm. and not really a fault of the house per se. I think it was just the IP. It was hard in the yeah. movie. It was hard to do like a really interesting set. I, I will say one of the coolest things I thought, and I was it was I was telling someone at work about this too. What I thought was so amazing was when Michael did jump out, the motion was like mimicked the movie perfectly. But they had he got so close with the fake knife, and the fact that they added the 
yes. sound to it. It was so like it was like it was you almost like like Julie said when she was in that fire right she said she felt the air of the knife go past her face and I think just the the way they timed it like they like and that's a difficult job they yeah, had to literally time that knife swipe with the sound effect yeah and they're doing and that so, over and over and over over yeah and but I tell you though it made it so real there was one moment where he like he like does this typical thing where he just comes out and stands and just goes. Whoosh, and I'm telling you, I'm like, whoa, uh, you know, it's like, it's so cool to be like, I, the way I looked at it is like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I feel like I'm in a Halloween movie though. Yeah. This is cool. Yeah. That's where I think that house succeeded. But I do, you know, I see, I definitely see your criticisms. And yeah. And I agree. It's like, but overall it was such a fun house because yes, we, this is our first Halloween house. And you know, it's like, it's like that whole, uh, the, the kiss my Shikra, you know, well, I don't have a Shikra, so kiss my Shikra, you know, from Costa Radio, yeah. all you fans are there will know that one. But, uh, it's like the same thing. It's like, well, we didn't get a Halloween house before. And this is the, uh, you know, I've always wanted to go to one of the Halloween houses. So the fact that I have Michael Myers coming out after me and I got to go through it. Yeah. That, that, that was, was cool. great. And again, and like we it. said, this was one of the lower houses on our ranking. But if you put this in a regional park, You'd be blown away. You would one. say this is yeah. the best house I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, so and they, and they yeah. did have what we wanted. They had the Michael. Michael. In fact, I, scre- no! I screamed that at one point that. when he came out and said Michael, and I went Michael. <laughs> and the, no. Yeah. And they, yeah, and they did have the no. Yeah. So they had the two yeah, things we, we, we wanted. That's what we so were that was good. So we had that. Yeah. Uh, and then so lastly, uh, yeah. Sadly, the last yeah. house on our list, the one that I think, and I've seen this one ranked dead last on every. Halloween Horror Nights ranking I've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. And what's terrible is the Hollywood version is too. even worse. Oh my god, it's even oh worse. Oh anyway, my god, how could it be? Really? Um, but, okay. <laughs> yeah, Horrors of Blumhouse. So of course, this is the one that was uh, Happy Death Day is the first half, and the first Purge is the second half. Now, I, in our preview episode, we we kind of thought this one might be the worst house, but we were trying to give it the benefit of the doubt and thought it may surprise yeah. us. Well, because I love Happy Death yeah. Day and I love the Purge series. Yeah, it so I'm like, well, it didn't surprise maybe us. that'll save it. So here's yeah. the problem with this house. Now, the, the Happy Death Day did exactly what we thought they would. They, you repeat yeah. sets. So you're walking through the same room over and over again, which I, was kind of cool. I kind of like, I think that's kind of neat. <laughs> Well, yeah, and the detail was made, like, even if you looked at you, you would hear, like, the, the phone ring, hey, it's my birthday, and if you looked down, it's a dad on the phone, on the iPhone, so, like, on the table every time, so it was, like, the, the set pieces were were great, Yeah, like, that part was great. Yeah, that, that part was good, now, but the problem was, you have the same baby face killer popping out, and a lot of times he was popping out behind you, from, yeah. and, like, the, the, the places where the actors were to, to pop out were not time very well and some of it just seemed lazy like a lot of the girl in the bed was just a mannequin yeah it was always was almost always was so you, like you missed an opportunity to have her like jump up and scream at you or something and um like it was just you were getting scared by the same or getting not scared by the yeah. same baby face killer every time and he would just kind of walk out and stand and then walk back in he didn't even try to like and really st- jump at you yeah, sometimes you do a swipe, but but the thing is that didn't it wasn't scary in the movie. Yeah. So it really was and and they've gone on to say that Happy Death Day is not a really wasn't meant to be a, a true horror film anyway. Yeah. So it's 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 you know, I mean, yes, it's well, a horror because kind it's of a bad thriller killer. more than anything. Yeah, but more of a thriller and now that, from what I understand the sequel is they said it's almost more like back to the future than it is uh like another horror. But um I will and what Tim kind of alluded to earlier, so they do have one sequence where you're. It was in the hospital, and the tree, the character of Tree, comes running out. Well, the first night we went in, I like. I guess I saw the tail end of it, and I didn't really get a good look at her. I just saw that it was a blonde girl. But the second night, when Julie and I walked in, I think you and you and Olivia were a little ahead of us. Yeah, because I missed it. We completely. got yeah. You and so this girl comes running out, and she looks right at us and says, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" Ah! And screams and gets yanked back. We looked at her face for a good – it looked so dead on like Jessica Roth that Julie and I stopped. <laughs> we were like, what? We paw- We literally froze, then both turned and looked at each other and kind of said, oh, my God, that looked just like her. To the point where I was like running up to Tim. I'm like, Tim, <laughs> did you see that? Did you see how much it looked like? And then remember that other guy in our tour said it too? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, they got a scare actress that looked so much like her that it almost, like, was a detriment because it, it paused me. It took me right out of the whole thing <laughs> because I was I couldn't believe how much it looked like her. Yeah, and 
my favorite moment of that house, uh, I will say I did get scared in it one time. I was, I was literally talking to Olivia and I had walked through his house and I was getting bummed because I was like, this is just not good. You know, I could already tell. Yeah. And I had just finished saying, I guess I just don't find the baby face killer very scary. I literally, the words had just come out of my mouth and he stepped that, out from behind something and got me the uh, one time he got <laughs> me because I wasn't paying attention. Um, but yeah, so then you go into the purge, which, oh my God, this was probably uh, the worst half of any house. The entire yeah, this event. is, this was like, actually, I hate to say it. This was almost like the par, on par with the regional houses. It really was. To where yeah. it was, it like, it was, the, I don't know. I mean, granted, I did not see the first purge and, but I go, went into it and I saw every other IP. I made sure I rewatched, we rewatched everything before the, to keep it fresh and, Except, but I'm like, I was like, all right, well, how different can the purge be? It's going to be the purge. It's going to be people coming after you and, and uh, you're trying to kill you and, and whatever. You know, how much different could it be? Well, I, I don't know if maybe this one had did, but I didn't understand any of the characters that were coming out at us. There no. were not even that many of them either. And they weren't really, like, a lot of them weren't even hardly dressed up. It was like just a random, like, people would walk out with, like, and shoot a yeah. gun or something. It That looked like they just needed a quick thing and ip and they threw it in there and universal hollywood got truth or dare right and yeah and, and, uh, unfriended, and happy death day. unfriended oh and unfriended right so at least we got happy death day because i can't imagine the other two doing it if, I, if that's the type of scares you do at least happy death day had the cool originality of the repeat houses yeah. and the, the the scare actress that looked like her and like some kind of Jump scares. I mean, what what jumps out at you when unfriended? Like a computer? I mean, I don't understand. Go watch the walkthrough. It's terrible. It's really bad. Yeah, I... Um, but the sets... I mean, I, and then, it's, like, the first part set was just, like, you just walk in through all... Basically, like, yeah. a city street. Uh, and it was, like, yeah, very open I mean, spaces with no scare actors. It was it was not good. Yeah, at least... Uh, yeah, so at <coughs> least... Uh, like, it's funny. If the, if, the, if the purge sequence was at least on par with the Happy Death Day, the house would have been pretty decent... But the fact that, like, Happy Death Day was, like, you know, so detailed and so cool the way they did it that – and you ended – like, at least like, maybe they should have flipped it around. Like, maybe you should have had the purge first. Yeah. Then you would have ended stronger because I will say is that even though Happy Death Day wasn't as scary, I was impressed with the, the detail of it and, like, the, how the dorm room was identical to the dorm room in the uh, – in the thing. and you know what? Like, why didn't they have the, the killer from uh, – the, the you know, the – the guy that was in the hospital jump out anywhere. They didn't have. Did they even? Well, I think there was one sequence with the 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 girl, the the roommate, in there as the killer at the end, right? She was dead, or I don't they even showed. Remember? Uh, but why didn't they have the serial killer guy jump out? I know. I mean, they had. He, he just a lot of out. missed opportunities. They should have made just. Yeah. A, or or don't even put the purge in there and just have a happy death day house that you could do right. more elaborately. Yeah, see, that's what they yeah. should have done. I think they were afraid. I think they were probably afraid of of just like, you know, maybe because Happy Death they, they knew wasn't going to be as scary. But that doesn't mean – I mean, let's put it this way. You see what they did with Poltergeist, which was – yes, it was a scary movie and, and an IP, but it's also a very old IP at this point. And so – but they managed to capture everything and be creative with it. Well, this house seemed to have not been – like they didn't, they were creative with Happy Death Day and got lazy with the Purge, is what it looked like. Yeah, yeah. But even Happy Death Day, but, I don't think, as far as the IP houses, was that elaborate compared. Like, no, you could tell they didn't just, spend as much budget and time on it and stuff. But, no, I mean, how hard is it to recreate a dorm room set? I mean, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, anyway, but, <laughs> yeah. So but, uh, next up, we, that was all the houses. I mean, I, like I said, I, there's not a single house I did not enjoy on some level. Like even the Happy right. Death Day house was uh, – there was parts of that I really enjoyed. Um, right. I think there was probably probably nine strong houses here. Yeah. And one so-so house. Yeah. And no bad houses. Like, I don't think there's any houses. No, like definitely that. no bad houses. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean just phenomenal lineup. And ten houses. There actually a, wasn't – That's a lot. Yeah, there wasn't anything bad about this event. Period. Actually, I mean, no, the real. I can't. I don't have a single complaint about it. Um, now, well, I do have one complaint that they took away Bill and Ted because I really had yeah, always wanted yeah, to see that yeah. show. Instead, we got to see Academy of Villains Cyberpunk, and this is here's the problem I have with this show. It's nothing against the show itself. The dancers are phenomenal, 
but I'm just not a dance person. I don't, you know, I don't watch. So you think you could dance? I don't. Yeah. I don't. My dance, you know, America's Got Talent or any of those talent shows, like dancing is my least favorite of all the acts. Yeah. I just don't enjoy it. Was- it. It was more sci-fi anyway. Though this this show, I mean, they had a thing where it was like, you know, they were they they started off with someone coming out and saying, "Okay, we want you interactive," and they're like, "When you see this, you gotta um like stand up, and when you see this icon on the screen, you have to go in slow motion, and this one you had to do something else." And except they they like forgot about it halfway through the show. Yeah, like you it's like in do the it first two time. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, what was that all that thing about? But then? yeah, the whole and granted, theme was was not very i i would if it was like monsters zombies out there or anything that was horror related but this whole cyberpunk post-apocalyptic thing just didn't feel halloween need to me right and nothing against the show at all because as far as shows go it's it's phenomenal it's just not our cup of tea that's all yeah i mean yeah talent wise incredible like the dancers were spot on Oh my god, yeah, they jump right, and we got priority seating with the RIP tour, so we were like right up in the middle of it all. Yeah, it I mean, great. these were like phenomenally talented people. I don't want to take anything away from that. It's just, it just yeah. wasn't my cup of tea. I would have much rather had sat there and watched some comedy show with Bill and Ted and yeah. had a good laugh, and you know, just, I just was kind of, kind of bored through the whole thing. So, um, yeah, I have some good pictures though I took, so I'll post those anyways. So you can get a feel for it at least. Yeah. So let's talk about the RIP tour. So the RIP tour, we checked in at the Cafe La Bamba. Yes. And um, uh, very easy check in. Of course, you you could you got uh, included with your ticket. You got like I'll, I guess you call them hors d'oeuvres or something. It wasn't like a yeah. full meal, but you had like all oh, this, but those mac and oh cheese my bites, God, incredible mac and cheese bites. Yeah. Oh my Tim God. and I kept going back for seconds and thirds. Oh uh, yeah, I did not try the dessert because at that point I was just kind of butterbeered out with sweets. <laughs> yeah. I kind of sho- I kind of shoved half a cupcake in my yeah. mouth, and um, Julie had the other half. Yeah, but... the the food was really really good. Uh, we. The problem is we got there a little late. I think we should have got there like an hour early instead of thirty minutes. But they said get there a half yeah, hour. Yeah, they said early. half so hour. I think you should. I think you could probably get in there a lot earlier. Right. In hindsight, we know next time if we ever do this, yeah, we get there an hour early because it seems like you just hang out in there. Yeah, and, we didn't. I didn't have as much time to sit there and nibble on stuff as I wanted to. Yeah. And they have a bar in there, so you can go get you know beer or whatever. And um, what's neat is they do have some scare actors that walk around. Uh, that's where I took yeah. that pic- great picture of the vampire that walked up to our table and talked with us for a little while. She stayed completely yeah. in character. Uh, that was pretty cool. She was trying. Yeah, she to, was really neat. Yeah, trying to ask uh, Brian's blood type, <laughs> which I forgot completely. Forgot, which was it was pretty sad because God forbid something happens to me now, I'm going to be sitting yeah. there. They're going to have to do that whole test and everything, or give me what's that one? Oh, which everyone. Yeah. So we um, take or we got a, you basically get assigned to a a team a tour name uh, we were the director a tour yes. and i think probably the only slight disappointment i had with the rip tour and it's not because of the rip tour itself it's just that i was expecting we'd have a little more interaction with the other group members but yeah that was kind of our like the- that was kind of our fault too because we sat at a different yeah. table and we were kind of you know so busy talking amongst ourselves yeah, um, we did. We did have a little bit of interaction with some of the. Couples. Yeah, we talked to that one dude that was like, uh, that was we were talking about fantasy. We ended up talking about fantasy football at some point. Yeah. But. So I mean, I, I was, and I think that would just depend on how you were assigned. I'm sure some groups like all get along like gangbusters, and some groups you just gotta yeah. never talk to anybody. Uh, well, and also in fairness, so. We had a slight dilemma because basically our tour started later than we wanted. Originally, I could have sworn I booked at like the 7 o'clock, but it was weird because we, we couldn't get an earlier time. at the, And then, of course, they opened up earlier times. But, you know, with the kids at the at the uh, camp there, we could – we someone had to get them at 1130. And to get out to Universal Property and get on the boat and where Olivia had to go get them was uh, – she needed to literally allot herself about a half hour at least – to get over there. So we kind of, uh, we, I'll first say this. I mean, our tour guide, her, her name was Neri. She, I hope I pronounced it right. Neri or Neri. Yeah, Neri. But, yeah. She said Neri. Neri. Okay. Yeah. She was fantastic. Cause we kind of pulled her over, uh, in the beginning and kind of told her, say, look, you know, how, you know, how is this going to work? Because, you know, you know, you know, like Olivia has to leave to go get the kids by 11, you know, how fast. And she was like, she goes, well, I'm saving these last two houses for the end. And they happen to be Seeds of Extinction and Trick or Treat, which were the two that Olivia definitely got. 
and and she was you know and but here's the the, the thing that was great about that she did was you know, it's not like she she did anything different to the tour. She kind of had her set plan, but she was very cognizant of that and like kept checking on us about the time. She goes, "Are you still good on time? You still good on Which time?" She didn't have you to know, do at, at all. I mean, right? She did not because you know what? She's getting paid either way. But no, but she made sure that uh, that you know she was keeping our 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 schedule in line. You know, making sure that we were. Okay. I mean, she may not have been able to do anything about it because we weren't in a group by ourselves. So she has to kind of keep everyone else, uh, you know, in, in mind also. But she was just really good. She came over. You know, she was talking to us during the breaks. Um, she was very informative. She did a nice little thing in front of each house where she gave us a little bit of tips and and little behind the scenes stuff. And you know, she. You know, she told us some little funny stories here and there. So she was just great. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I know it can't be an easy task to lead a tour like that, you know, especially through the crowds of people that were there. But she always kept the tour together and she got us through everything and was just overall, I, I can't say enough good things. It was great. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing that she can keep that many people. I mean, I think our group was like 12. Uh, yeah. I think it was total. But to keep that many people and keep an eye on them. And make sure everybody's following. And she made sure we got bathroom breaks. So she made sure we got to all the uh, secret bars. Yeah. Um, she was always keeping us con- cognizant of time and how much time we had left. And she was very friendly, very informative. And, you know, just oh, it, was, it was so much fun to just have somebody that's going to just make sure you have a great time and see everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she got she, she like she took pictures of us four because Julie made those really cool shirts for the event. She got a picture of all four of us. Then she guys took a picture with us. Uh, Tim and I later on with one of the scare actors. She called over to get that cool voodoo guy, and she like called him over so we could get a, a like a, a cool shot. So yeah, she was just really good, and I, that's why I will say you got. I really. I mean, we'll go into little quick details. I know we're coming over two hours here on the show. So, like, Cody's probably in her glory. She's <laughs> like, I love it. They've been gone two weeks, and now I get a, a five-hour show. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so it, it's – um, but, yeah, so it's, it's like, it's great – way to see the event but like tim and i said though it's like you either get an early one so you have time to go through the houses again or do a second night for sure because really uh, getting through once is i don't think is enough especially a couple of like it definitely like we would have probably missed that steak thing if we didn't go through poltergeist a second time or yeah and i was trying to decide whether if i went back would i do the r.i.p tour the first night and then use the express to go back and hit the houses the second night, or would I do it the way we did and do express first and then do the RIP tour? It's tough because I think there's merit in both ways to do it. You know, because it's like you know, you know, you get with the express, you're guaranteed to see everything. You're not going to miss anything. You're going to get it all. But you know, so then you say, well, maybe you should do it first, so you make sure you see everything, and then the ones you really like, you go back a couple That's of times. That's what I was thinking, because if you went through the RIP tour first, you'd get a quick run-through of every house. Not a quick run-through, but you'd get a full run-through yeah. of every house, and then you could just save your Express for, like, you might say, well, I don't care about seeing Blumhouse again, but I would yeah. love to see Scary Tales four times. Kind right. Of thing. So that I could see some merit in maybe reversing what we did. Right. But at the same time... The RIP tour, you're basically... Oh, wait, but the Express, you only get one time, right? That was the thing. Oh, that's true. That is true. You, I think there's one where you can get unlimited, but it's like a it's really way expensive, more expensive. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the, the only downside, I think, with the way we did it is um, by the time you get to the RIP tour, some of the, a lot of the houses you've already seen, so there's not as much anticipation as... Because you know, you've already seen the house. So you, yeah. Although I was excited to see that poltergeist a oh second gosh, time, yeah. and same with Stranger Things because of the the excitement of it, that it was so cool and I couldn't wait to see it again to see if I noticed any more details or really just because sometimes you get so excited and it blows you away that you almost can't re- recall it all. Yeah. So you need a second know, I, time just to make sure you get it. I think there's merits in all of it. If you're doing a one nighter, yeah. no brainer, definitely do R.I.P. Yeah. tour. If you're, it's, it's yeah. if it's two nights, I think you could make the argument of doing. One RIP tour night and one express, or do two express nights. Right. Yeah. One. You definitely like. I mean, I know we've had a, like a, like Beard Man. He got through everything. I think multiple times through three nights in a row. But he also did say it was it was exhausting. Like he was literally crossing the park back and forth. And that's a thing that I think was great about the RIP tour that we shouldn't shouldn't forget to mention. So when you see a house, even with the express path. 
like we said earlier, to get out of the house, you usually sometimes have to walk a whole distance to get back to the front of another line and find the express entrance again. But with the RIP tour, she kind of goes from the the exit to one door and cuts across right to the front of the other door. And the RIP tour, they literally stop the line as soon as you approach it. Yeah, I mean, those. yeah, it's definitely, you feel like a VIP because you're, yeah. you're getting, you're cut in front of everybody. And she did some shortcut stuff like th- going through backstage. Yeah, cars. right. Yeah, that back, back, the, 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 remember she even said, don't take pictures. We're going through like the costume yeah. change zone or whatever. And that was cool. Yeah. That was like a little bonus thing. And, and, and let me tell you this, like, I mean, just overall in the, the general sense of this event, this, I mean, even I was like poo-pooing people saying, oh, you don't understand the, 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 the energy it takes to get to this event and the, the, you know, you really need to have endurance. And then I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Literally, who, yeah look, at I've been to theme parks. I've been to Hollywood nights. I've been to all these things. I said, this is nothing. You know? But let me tell you, they, this event takes a lot out of you and to get the fullest, you know, you really want to see as much as possible. So like yeah, like Tim said, either do two nights and try and do an express, or if you one night, I, I think it is a no brainer. Just you know what, Sh- if you can shell out the extra money and get that RIP tour because it's just so fun and it and it really is a, a social environment. Like I think if like it was just like like if Tim and Olivia were there by themselves and Julie and I were there by themselves, I'm sure we would have interacted more with the other people. But at first, you got to think about it. That was the first time it was just the four of us being able to really. Right, yeah, Talk, without kids, you know, cause, yeah. Because we're both, and, 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 you know, like, I know, like, I, you know, Julie and I love, like, you know, like, like, love seeing, like, the, the things through the kids, you know, the kids' eyes, too. So we're talking with them, so we kind of almost, like, we're talking to them more throughout the event than, <laughs> than you guys until that night. So it was, you know, so it was, it was kind of like, you know, okay, we'll, we'll get to really hang out now for a little bit. So that probably was part of the reason why maybe we didn't interact as much with the other group. Although we kind of talked to that one yeah, that couple of the, that the girls that were with the and that guy that was behind us. So, yeah, but yeah, RIP tour. It was phenomenal. the The whole yeah. event was just it. It lived up to my expectations. Like, uh, yeah. it was it was so much fun. The houses were so cool. Like Brian said, it probably spoiled every other haunt event now. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Thank God I'm going to my second favorite one this weekend, which is the the haunted graveyard at Lake Compounds, because like at least that's like really good because it's nice and long and immersive and everything. And I up until like, the Hollywood Hard Nights, that was my favorite. And I'm like, oh, nothing will beat that. Yeah. Well, boy, was I wrong. I'm, I'm probably I, going to uh, Scarewinds later in the month, and I'm like, ew, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of well, a Pooh Man's there at least, but yeah. Pooh Man's there. Yeah, so he'll, he'll... Pooh Man. I have to, I have to but, spring for the Fright Lane so I can get the uh, the secret doors or whatever. Oh, right, right. Yeah, but I, I will tell you though, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, I cannot recommend this event more. If you are a horror fan, this is probably one of the most fun ways to enjoy like the Halloween experience because the, the entire park seems to even the parks that don't participate just around the the signs of it like the voodoo donut had that exclusive uh donut um I gotta take a picture of it and post it even I didn't notice this till the last day but our room service card in the hard rock was themed to Hollywood Horror Nights. Like it had Frightful Fries or something on it or something like that. Wait, I'm like, Tim, did you even notice this? Uh, <laughs> I was yeah. like it, it's you a know, big you don't deal. Notice things. It, you definitely oh, tell yeah. it's a big deal. It brings a lot of crowds, and I think the event's only going to get bigger and more crowded, right. and they're going to keep adding houses. And I mean, yep. this was a record number of houses. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It's only going to get better from here, I'm sure. Uh, and it's going to be really hard to try to figure out uh, how I'm gonna afford to go again <laughs> because i know I mean, it's like i'm like how do i not go every year it's not now. like i, I want to go every year but like, i can't afford a freaking universal vacation every no. single year that that is it's a rough one Ooh. i mean you have to like literally just do the halloween horror nights and pick something else but i will say this and you know we probably should start to wrap it up but i will say this and i think this was a key to it you could tell universal and all its employees take such pride and are so proud of this event and it comes through every inch of the way and have fun with you, it they seem to really yeah. like genuinely enjoy doing it right and this is not an easy task to pull off because they have a daytime full of guests going through so they have to and like we noticed it remember when we were leaving universal on that saturday was it saturday or where were we where we were like oh they're gonna like 
where we're kind of near where um I think it was Saturday we were heading we were heading out yeah and we were like and we saw them and I'm like wow it's like they within a, they still had stuff covered up and we're like this place must just explode with people at six uh, as soon as this place closed at five o'clock like all hands on deck kind of thing yeah because they they have obviously the major set pieces are out like the Chucky stages out there but like all the shot specialty shops are closed and and stuff when, yeah they have and, to go uncover yeah. all the like there's certain yeah. like places to eat and drink and stuff that are closed during the day that are right. just Halloween hard night so they gotta go open all that stuff up I mean there's a lot they have to do in that like hour and a half they have to to get it ready so and they, I tell you, and they seem to do it perfect every night. Oh, and they, we should just mention quickly too is that the 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 merchandise they have there is crazy. It's like they, that is like a constant. There's like I thought it was just literally they're gonna be that one store, which actually had the like that had some of the least stuff in it. it. Really, if you think about it, the tribute store, it was all over. There was like sh- every shop had some stuff for it. Yeah, they, and so so cool shirts. I got a. Uh... Uh, well, Brian, you got the same shirt as I did. You got more shirts. Yeah. We, obviously, we both got the oh Swamp God, Yeti. I spent hundred plus dollars on shirts. <laughs> yeah, you. We both got the Swamp Yeti, which was a custom yeah. print one. You had to yeah. custom print it, and then I got the really cool Scare Zone shirt that has like the Chucky and Killer Clowns on the back. Uh, you got that one too. Yeah. Uh, and then you also got the um, pass holder one, and what else? I think I got the generic, the the the, the actual event shirt that said. Yeah, I mean, just... Really and we, we got the Julie original shirt. Yeah. Which we have to show a close-up of to show the detail that she put into that. Yeah, you will have to post that on Instagram or something. Yeah, because, I mean, there's a picture of us in them, but I don't know if you can truly get the detail of what she did in that <coughs> shirt. All the little hidden uh, vent-based things in there and, like, literally down to, like, the smallest little things that she did and actually we we found out through this service we used that this is close to never so i hope you're listening still cody on this one because i know you asked about this we basically think we might have a way now to start really getting shirts that if people want to buy some civil gore shirts we can yeah pretty easily now i think we can definitely do that so so all right i guess we should wrap it up because we're we're approaching the two and a half hour mark which probably this might be our longest show ever might be yeah and then we didn't even have our first shop or anything but i know um yeah so guys uh i appreciate you hanging with us for two and a half hours but this was like yeah. the event of the year for us and yeah. it, it kind of worked out because we had a big long episode to welcome us back from the hurricane right <laughs> right a couple we, episodes. So we, yeah i mean think about it if you break it up and listen to a little bit for three weeks you'll you'll it'll be like it'll be they'll even out yeah there you go in episodes <laughs> but we will be back on regular format next week we will be going through a movie yes. now granted our back to ghoul school theme month kind of got yeah, I kind of got fizzled so out. I guess we're gonna- oh, and we just, I forgot, we got to announce. So we're going to try and, well, I guess we'll have to post this over the weekend now, is our, our October challenge, because by the time you hear this episode, it's you're going to kind of get started by next week already. Yeah. So I think we'll have to either, yeah, so I think what we'll do is just keep an eye on our uh, on our social media, and we'll post, we're still trying to work out the details, and we'll post the, the rules to this year's challenge. Sorry it's a little late. Probably would have been more on schedule, but with like we said, we def- definitely got thrown off a little bit. But um, we'll, we'll come up with something and make sure we have it posted by the end of the weekend uh, for you guys so you can see um, – you can start your challenge. Yeah. I need to, to, to have a better showing than last yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. You and, Cody, yeah. you and Cody kicked my butt. <laughs> I mean, I did have the wedding and a couple of trips in the no, middle excuses, of it. Excuses, excuses. I know. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> All right, guys. So we will we'll <laughs> see you back here next week. Again, Halloween Horror Nights had an absolute blast. One of the best yes. vacations I've ever had. Uh, yes. Cannot recommend yeah, it more. <laughs> highly recommend it. If you have the means, as Ferris Bueller would say, I highly recommend yes. picking yes. it up. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh, We'll see you guys (laughs) back here next week. Take care. See you later.